how do I put it? It was like, what do you care about them? What do you care about those people? What difference does it make to you? Take care of your own life. Do the best you can for you and your family. What do the rest of the people mean to you? They don't mean anything to you. They're just serfs, they're just people. You know, what's the end goal? The end goal is to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society. So they, they want a one world government controlled by them. Everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. <laughs> one two one two welcome back comrades wow what a week get, let's get so many cameras that lucifer is paying for here let's get them all up <laughs> here we go here we go <laughs> just straight in straight in with it straight to the point so yeah um welcome back rise above fams most of the viewers uh, oh, look, he, he's already here in the comment section stop we are ah, not peasants i didn't excellent. call you peasants i called you comrades Jesus, Jesus, it's already started. Fuck me, we're like 10 <laughs> seconds into the show, man. I, right, I'm just going to say, right, tonight's format, we have obviously got a guest, which is Ola Wolny. She is an astrologer, a Babylonian numerologist, um, an alchemist, and, and she's going to be with us in about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, so yeah, welcome back to Rise Above. Now... Um, <laughs> We've had an interesting couple of days, haven't we, Lance? Yeah, you could say that. Our Telegram group's been blowing up. Yeah, so for anyone that's been on the Telegram, they know that I've been under attack this week um, by more than one person as well. There were a small, a small gaggle of um, of people that were giving me some criticism, which I always actually welcome. You know, we try and get these people to call in customer services. We have never once had a single complaint in customer services. We haven't, though. Because obviously the calls are controlled. Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so after our guest tonight, as soon as we finish chatting to Ola, from about 10 o'clock on, Onwards, um, we will be opening the phone lines to yes, this person in the uh, in the chat already. Uh, shout out to Sheep Farm Studios. I think his name's Mark, and he wants to call us up. He's got some serious concerns about me and how I'm misleading people. So as here always on Rise Above, we are open to our critics. We actually invite our critics with open arms, but they never seem to call up. I've even given Mark my personal phone number. No fair play, mate. Yeah, no, yeah. I have because that's how that's how real I am. God damn it! And um, I'm going to ask him to call in to have a, a chat with us and say exactly how I'm misleading everyone. All right, so um, what else have we got here? Let's just get that. Me a new age pagan. <laughs> if you actually pay, if anyone who pay, they know how much I'd go on and absolutely my dislike for the new age movement. So for me to even be affiliated with those words, new age, anyway, that's anyway, painful, man. We'll come on to that later on. So um, we had midweek uh, chat last week with Master Lee. Um, he will be joining us at some point tonight as well. So, uh, we'll look forward to that. Um, yeah, make sure you subscribe. Well, you already subscribe to this channel, and it's on this channel. Midweek Deep was was last week because we didn't have a Friday night show. Hey, we've also had some complaints that we're not broadcasting regularly anymore as well. So you, I saw a complaint today. You guys have got the same views you did last year because you're not keeping up your shows. What do you mean you're not keeping up the show? Because so, well, we have a break every time, every once in a while. Oh yeah, here's another criticism that we're we're, we're, we're twins with Roots brands. So yeah, I've had my um, zero. I'll in take today. a zero in, mate. Yeah, if you yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here's the zero in. Here's, here's, here's the uh, here's the brand that we're associated with. Let's get the peasant cam up here. <laughs> yeah, zero in is um is from the Roots brand, and if you purchase any products from the RootsBrands.com and you use Rise Above as your uh, reference code, we get a 15% kickback, helps us go in, we power ourselves through this, and every single person that's bought this and taken it, do you know what they do? They message me or email, it's like, Lance, you weren't lying, that stuff is banging. Yeah. I've literally been achieving a lot, and remember, it's all made from fruit and vegetables. Zero in. It helps rise above, and it helps you too, comrades. Don't forget to don't forget to purchase. I want one as well, Andy oh, right. PG. Yeah, I'm double dropping here, quickly. <laughs> Mate, I've had two today. They say you shouldn't ever take more than four. So this will be my third capsule. But I tell you what, my productivity is at least one hundred and thirty-three percent. At least. 
So we've got an interesting guest tonight in the studio, uh, in the green room, sorry. We have, and we'll, we'll be speaking to her in about 10 minutes. So I've got to give a massive shout to, um, to Slick Rick. And if you haven't subscribed to the other Rise Above channel where all of this amazing content is going out, edited up for your hungry mouths, you need to get on to Rise Above, the other channel. The link's in the description. It's linked on the YouTube channel. Look how good the thumbnails are. We've got a great comment here. <laughs> Ra is twinned with the UN, Dougie Gemmell. Yeah, we're sponsored by Lord Schwab, in case you hadn't already noticed. Um, so, yeah, get on to the other channel. These, one, these four are coming out this week, as well as this one. This is a particular great find from episode 74. I completely forgot making, uh, talking about this. And this is the great thing about Slick Rick. He's picking these moments out of raw time that we're actually, we are, don't even remember talking no, about mate, some of no. this stuff because, you know, we've got so much going on here in the studio, Andy PG. As everyone can see here, yeah, we've got all these buttons, all these screens, we're controlling this everything. This is mission control. This is raw mission control. Obviously, all paid for by Lucifer. Um, so <laughs> so what, we, what we need to do is remember, actually, what we've gone through and Slick Rick, Slick Rick is doing this for us. Um, so thank you to him. And the greatest thing is, He's picking out these moments, right? And we Tavistock Kids Transgender Clinic. Look at look what he pointed out. Look at the address of the Tavistock Centre. Bell Size Lane. <laughs> is that a coincidence? Oh, wow. The bell. Where they're bell. literally resizing bell. people's bells. It's 120 Bell Size Lane. Really? Okay. As usual, guys, we'll be manning the emails and Facebook chat if you want to send us a message, if you want to tell us how satanic we are. Or if you buy some merch, I'll give you a shout-out. Oh, yeah, well, that was way. another one of the gripes we'll be dealing with in the complaint oh, section God, tonight. Yeah, we're in the yeah. shit, aren't we? Yeah, we're really <laughs> in the shit. We've really been ripping people off with this merchandise that's completely optional. Um, I have to let everyone know the Soviet Union red sweater has finally been released. It is available right now. Just in time for Christmas. Just in time for Christmas, comrades. Um, www.riseabove. Uh, .tv forward slash shop. Covid Union jumper is ready, as are the women's hoodie dress. It comes in black. Yeah, they look dope, man. Yeah, mate. Black or grey, um, yellow, pink or green. Rise above digital sun logo is now printed on these dresses, ladies, and they are flying out. Also, this is my favourite. I, I wanted to have one to wear tonight. It's the rise above, out above, so below hoodie. Uh, sorry, sweater and t-shirt. Nice. Well, three different colour combos there. And if you look um, really closely, you can actually see that as above, so below is a colted into the lettering. Of course. We're hiding. We're hiding the knowledge inside the garms, comrades. That's Currently 163 about. people tuned in. Oh, the good evening. Good evening to Uncle, uh, Uncle, Uncle Tej Powell, Sing, Seek 101. Mm. We've never had so many requests to have a guest back on as we did with uh, Seek 101, so we're going to have to get that arranged very soon, because we only had him on for an hour last time, and he was doing expose on the Freemasons. And yeah, someone love that shit. Someone was also having a go at me today, apparently we cut off Uncle Tage Powell when he was talking about Flat Earth. Did we? Yeah, I don't remember that either. Weird. Look, a, guys, we're not perfect. <laughs> I know, I know. You know we've been put on the high pressure this week, and that's why I'll be opening up the customer services phone lines after our guest. Also... The T-shirt of the week, the special that's going to be available, it is available right now for £20. Snell. Snell's been waiting for this T-shirt diligently for months. It's now available in the, um, the unisex and the ladies' cut. Okay, yes, cult leader. That's right, £2 medical droid. <laughs> <laughs> right, speaking of cult leader, um, oh, yeah, that was another complaint that I dress up as the general. That's on the list as well. Oh, come on, that's <laughs> funny, man. Oh, no, Do you remember right at the start, Rise Above, we used to wear the Russian hats? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, listen, if you don't get why, every now and then I don don't the general's uniform. You obviously don't get rise above in general. The Soviet um, Union, Soviet Union, come on, you, you <laughs> have to get the connection, guys. <laughs> that, that, that's like 101. Anyway, so there's a new range. Um, that, that Richard has been triggered by the dress. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so there's a new range coming out. It's called the Conscious Shock Range. And I've got a shout out to... Um, Deep bank memes for coming. We came up with this Gimp Lives Matter together. Yep. We came up with it together. Um, so that's going to be going on t shirts and sweaters from next week, I believe. And uh, also, let me just do that. And also, the uh, the general is going to first appear as well, just, just telling everyone that they're peasants. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm making a t shirt and a sweater that people will wear that tells everybody else they're peasants. What do you think about that? Well, <laughs> we're going to get more complaints. Well, yeah, we're definitely going to get some more complaints. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to take it off the screen because I don't want to... Oh, should we, should we show them? Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, right. And more merch coming up to make more money that I'm swindling everyone with. 
is um, we have some Christmas designs. Obviously, Christmas is just around the corner. So we wanted to do right above Christmas jumpers. Um, this is some brilliant work. We here, have two, two um, competing <laughs> designs here on the left is a, a rise above Ra nativity scene, um, <laughs> which is from Rise and Shine. This this is going to piss off the Christians. Um, and on the right, we have a Dickensian Christmas carol scene, which is from Russ Kieran. This is brilliant work, honestly. Now, normally, I do some sort of competition, like like uh, which one is best, but we're just going to print them both. Make that equally as good. They're no, no, really, I, really I, good. I, I simply couldn't choose between these two. They are so good. Like... Everyone look at the included. expression on everyone's faces. <laughs> look at the expression on your face as you're playing that fiddle. Yeah, I'm fiddling, man. Over here. I'm jumping. So, yeah, um, Donna Harper said epic um, work from Russ. And and Jake here at Rise and Shine absolutely smashed it. I love the way I'm presenting the rabbit. Look how Omer beats. And, I know. And, 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 <laughs> and Magic, they're like really, really like eagerly looking at the rabbit. Like look that. at Magic's face here. <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah these will be available i guess um they'll probably go on sale for like the first of december um a christmas jumper who's the snowman oh it's greta greta yeah, is, yeah. greta is the snowman yeah so uh, everyone's on there as well jd Terry slim spitter oh that's a good point spitter and manic are back next week for pirate radio yeah, i nice. should let everyone know about that Okay, so um, I can see she's not on camera. Let, let's get her camera going. In just a moment, I'll, I'll let her get ready. There she is. She's appeared in the green room. Ola Wolney, right? So this is our guest this week. Um, now, how shall I describe her? She describes herself as an alchemist. She's an astrologer. She's heavily invested into Babylonian mythology, numerology, and astrology, and she comes with a very unique take on all of this. She's originally from Poland. I hope I'm getting this right. And she's actually broadcasting from Norway right up in the Arctic Circle. Okay. Very, very pleased um, to have her on as a guest. Let me introduce Ola Walny. Hi, everybody. Ola. Very good evening. Welcome. How are you doing? All right. I'm doing very, very well. Probably a little bit colder up here than down there, guys. But um, welcome to Rosenberg. Very, very <laughs> warm welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> what is the temperature where you are in the realm? Well, to be honest with you, right now it's not too bad. It's probably about three, so we're good to go. <laughs> we're we're sort of maybe in the single single yeah, digits. Yeah, we're, we're about eight or nine. Out yeah, there, it's just the dropped down here. It's been very mild. We're in the south of of the UK, right on the coast. Um, so it's been very, very mild. So yeah, you're right up there near the Arctic Circle, or fairly near to it anyway. Well, well, right in it, to be fair. Um, in it, inside the Arctic Circle. Yeah, yeah it, I, I think it started 60 something, 66. Um, so we are at 69 up here. Wow. The, the furthest north I've ever been in our realm, if we believe in north as a concept, because everything's yeah. on the table here at Rise Above Ola, is, is I guess, I guess Stockholm. Um, so I, I'm assuming you've obviously traveled the world a little bit is what is the feeling like being up there in the Arctic Circle compared to the rest of the realm that's, you know, say nearer to the equator, for instance? Um, I am not sure if this is fair to sort of make a general statement in terms of that's how it is in the Arctic, but certainly, and this is maybe for another discussion, but certainly up here, Northern Norway, uh, Lofoten area, um, the, the feeling is that the energy is extremely strong and you can feel it. You know, I've, I've been a bit around, I've been to places that give this great marketing about being spiritual and having all this energy, you know, Bali and, and all that. I didn't feel it there. So up here, up north, there's something very, very special. But I think that there's perhaps a link here with the with the fact that the local legends and the, the, the local stories um, talk about um, Hyperborea being here. Sure. Well, you know, for people that subscribe to the Flat Earth model, you, you would actually be in the centre. Yeah, right. Um, near to Magnetic North nearer to true north you know if we talk about energies and frequencies and, and we can assume that um our realm is in at least in a sense electromagnetic it would certainly make sense that your your geographical location whichever model you're looking on mm. is actually nearer to some sort of polar it is on either model whether you believe in the globe or the flat earth um or as above so below realm you are really in this nearer to the center um I 
That's that's right. And I'll tell you what, and I think this is something, this is something that I've observed that, that really, really, um, at the beginning, it was very puzzling for me because, you see, I, I moved up here. I kind of moved um, gradually because I, I, I used to live in London. Then I moved to Stavanger, which is southern Norway, and then I moved up here. Um, so every time a little bit more north. And up here, what you would expect is this kind of Arctic cold weather. But that's not exactly the case. So we can laugh here about, you know, the temperature being lower. But the, the truth is that when the summer comes, um, and I cannot really explain it, because when you are here and the temp temperatures are, let's say, around 20, you actually feel like it's much, much warmer. So, so my question is, where is it coming from? Why is it like that? I've been around, you know, I just actually came back from, from holidays in, in some tropical place. And and it was 27 it was yeah it was okay but you, you know what i mean but up here for some reason in the summer we do not have to even get into 20s and it's somehow really really warm so where is it coming from well i kind of noticed that when i went skiing in the alps you know when the sun when the sun came out i could take my coat off and you could pretty much ski down in a vest because right. the sun the heat of the sun um was the air was thinner the altitude was higher. So yeah, I guess that makes sense. Interesting. Okay, so ancient wisdom, alchemy, transformation. For you, this all does this all come back to Babylon? Is this where you're drawing your knowledge from? How did you how did you come to the to this place? Um so so I, I think I I owe a bit of a, an explanation. Um, the, the reason why I went to Babylonian astrology is not because I, I'm probably the only astrologer, who, who, well, someone who looked into astrology, who will tell you this is nothing good, okay? This is nothing what most astrologers will tell you, based on what I have, what I have found out. Um, if the reason it comes back to Babylon is because for them, it comes back to Babylon. Okay, Babylon has never ended, and <laughs> so so let, let let's get that out in the open. Um, the astrology is not something for people who like the kind of um, uh, weird stuff. This is something absolutely practiced by the I don't want to call them elites. Let's call them elites, um, and and this is absolutely something that um, they are following, and the the evidence of that is visible over the past three years if you know how to look if you look into babylonian astrology specifically um, babylonian astrology compared to the the other um, types is um, we say it's omen based so 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 back in the day um, nobody was counting charts the way we do now they were observing the sky they were looking at certain phenomena they were looking at the color of of uh, the planet it's showing up they were looking at um uh, sort of the weather etc etc all the associated things and based on that they would sort of draw conclusions some of that we sort of filter down into into the current days if, if you know uh, how to how to sort of navigate um through it you know how to read the omens and they are absolutely following that they are absolutely following the energies and i think i think i owe also an explanation about how i view the the whole idea of astrology what it actually is um based on what i found out but based on what i've researched and um when I say research, when I when I say find out, I mean I I actually had some time on my uh, on my hands and I I spent some time reading ancient texts, um, reading into the the Babylonian texts in Kabbalah, all that stuff and kind of find once. Oh, we've got a little once break. You're breaking up a little bit, that Ola. Of Ola, I'm just going to put you back into the green room a sec. We apologize. And Ola, I hope you can still hear me. I put you back into the green room because it seems like you were breaking up there and people were missing what you were hearing. Let me saying. Pull, say, sorry, missing <laughs> what you were saying. Yeah, I'm just trying to... I think she's frozen as well. Damn. I will try to get her back. Ola? She has frozen. 
Right, yeah. let we gone on. The yeah, she's connection. gone red. All oh, right, so she start, was, yeah. as per usual, yeah, starting yeah, to get yeah. juicy. Um, right, I'm just going to message her and ask her to reboot. Reboot. Do you want to do some comments, please, Andy? Yeah. So who we got to tune in? We have 225 people currently on the uh, tuned into Raw. Let's have a look who we got in the comments. It is Friday night. <laughs> Shout out to Sam Carney, as usual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we knew he was going to be there. We had to get the comments off the screen because we had the sex bots. I'm probably going to be accused of silencing Ola now, aren't I? Oh can you God. can you boot? Can you remove her from the yeah. thing? No, no, actually on the three dots. If you remove her up there, oh that one, yeah that one. Let me do it, you amateur. Oh, it's not doing this. Oh, there we go. Remove guest. So Ola, please. Oh, I've got. A... Oh, we she's here on Skype. Yeah, yeah. Send her a message. Yeah. Um, re just go reboot computer and rejoin. She just sent a message. What should I do? <laughs> yeah, we apologise for that. Um, it was all green, and then all of a sudden, she started going yellow, and then it was red, and then it cut out. Same thing happens to Master Lee. Yeah, same thing does happen. Shout out to Master Jason Lee. Jackson. He's saying hello to us. Okay, in the we chat. have Ola back. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <coughs> Ola, welcome back. Oh, sorry, guys. Thank you so much. I, there we go. I have no idea what happened. Uh, we, I think it was a connection problem. The the little green bar turned yellow, then it turned red, and then you froze. So I think you were just right. saying um, that you were you had okay, some time. On my end, you were... still yellow. yellow may be okay. Um, yeah, just pick up where you left off. You had some time on your hands. You're reading some ancient texts. You mentioned Kabbalah and. Where I sort of um, this whole topic was from exploring. So we're talking the the Babylonian, the um, uh, the, the, the Hermetica, uh, the Vedas, um, the Kabbalah, and across, across all of these different texts, trying to find a single the same thread, um, which, which kind of explains the same story, the same story, um, and all of them, of course make references to astrology or at least to the to the science of and and this is where this is i think where it gets interesting because you see when i when i put a bit into that um i i cannot agree i cannot follow the the, the kind of regular traditional approach to astrology which very much promotes it as some kind of um evolutionary um study or evolution Evolutionary way uh, for development, and I absolutely do not agree with that. Um, the reason I don't agree with that is because to me it's very, very clear that astrology happens to be a very, very, very um, um, symbol based on symbols called into, into whatever we have above us, whatever we are. Living living in whatever construct we are part of um seems to be something to, to decode it okay yeah this so is something that we come up with you'd like me to, now, to Ola, go into that explain why I, I would but we are having connection problems again so what i'm going to suggest is that you actually call us on Skype and we and we um, we get rid of the video because I don't want anyone to uh, not get everything you were saying and it seems like the connection isn't so great. We have our Skype patched into the soundboard here. So if you kill Restream and just call us on Skype, then I think this will be much better because, yeah, people are saying okay. you are cutting out again. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, we'll get, we'll get rid of you on here. Sure. Yeah, guys, we apologise for that, but I think Skype is the same way forward. Same story, isn't it? It's always the same. Like, she was really getting into something yeah. there, and it just starts cutting out. We apologise for that, guys. So, um, yeah, we're already in contact with Ola on Skype just here, so she'll just be turning off a restream connection, and then she'll call us. I am not pressing a button with my with my ill-gotten gain profit button down here. <laughs> and right, like, so a comment there. For, what's this new person? Two-pound medical droid. <laughs> Uh, sounds like the Norman Collier microphone. I like this person. They're funny. It's, yeah, Sam here is putting up some links to Ola's work. So when when we're done here, if you want to check out what um, what Ola has been uncovering, then please check out these links here: selfmasteryquest.com, um, reality interview, and Sayers interview, which is some good ones. She seems very well read. 
Yeah, absolutely. I'm just in. I'm looking forward to getting her back on this connection. Any minute now. Let me see oh, what else. Oh, 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 oh! Have we got a call? No, almost missed call from Ola. Oh no! Do you know what's happening? It's calling on my phone. Okay. Uh, Let's just do it through. Right? Yeah, we'll do it for real. Right. We just got to connect this to here. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. Hi, Ola. I'm just connecting this to here. Mm -mm -mm. Hold fire, people. Hold fire. Ola, welcome back. Mm -hmm. Ola, can you hear us? Um, to be fair, very badly. Really? Okay. One sec. Okay. Right. We'll, we'll just call you. We'll call you back from the tablet. Okay. Right. You call back on there. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Ola. Hello. There we go. Yes. Does that sound better? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. We can hear you yeah, nicely. Yeah, loud and clear. Okay, Guys, so let us know in the chat. Yeah, everyone that's tuned in, let us know. So our guest, Ola Wolney, we apologise, we've lost video, but she is connected now on Skype. So pick up where you left off, Ola. Astro sure. Astrology's got it wrong. How have they got it wrong? Well, they they got it wrong in the sense that um, the the mainstream. Well, first of all, where do I even where do I even start this? First of all, the the astrology, as you probably all know, the the mainstream astrology. That's not even astrology. That is not the, the Western astrology. I, I call it the the kind of um, newspaper version of astrology because that is not astrology. The, the zodiac is wrong, and the um, just 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 the whole approach is 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 not even is not even close to what it what it should be. Okay, so, uh, so you, sorry, I thought I lost you again. No, I, um, I was just going to say that you're saying that uh, the Babylonian astrology is more like omens and and looking to signs in the sky to predict the future rather than checking charts. <laughs> Um, it's just a different. It's just a different approach. Um, the the Babylonian astrology and and the um, so, so that comes from the the, the Sumer, the Mesopotamia um, area, and it's and it's probably around up to five thousand um, BC um, uh, years old. So so this is this is where we got our um, basics in astrology from. However, over over years, over centuries, it evolved, and it, of course the, the the kind of astrology that we're using today with the charts and um, the way the way we kind of do it today. This is more of a remnant of the of the Greeks um, rather than the the original. However, there is one more thing that's kind of um, happening here, which is the use of incorrect zodiac. So, so, and and what that's to do with is the is, is procession of equinoxes, if if people are familiar with it. Um, so, so the Western astrology basically does not um, include that fact, um, and and I don't think this is this is really important to to go into discussion whether the Earth is flat or not. It's what we what we see is the result of the phenomena. Right, that's interesting. Um, so, 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 what does it come down to? It comes down to the fact that, for example, right now it's sort of early November, and people will think that this is the Scorpio season, that we're in Scorpio. That's incorrect. We're in Libra. This is the correct position of the sun, um, and that's that's what I'm talking about. The, the Wow. Oh, wow. She just got the Skype sky just cut out. <sighs> Call That's back. literally never happened. That has never happened before. <laughs> Please get like, back onto what Skype. What is going that? on? <clears throat> literally, I just looked at the screen of the tablet and the Skype just went, pff, it disappeared. That's never happened. Shady shit, man. Yeah, there's try someone's trying to, some sorcery oh. is, trying to, is trying to sabotage us here. All right, we're calling back Ola. I've just had a message from Master Lee. He'll be with us at 10 o'clock. Nah, it's, yeah, I won't connect. Oh, oh, here we go. Someone is trying to sabotage us, Ola. Please carry on. <laughs> this is unreal. Um, so, so um, th this actually happened before, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying is that the if you if you... 
if you use any of the um, uh, the simplest um, equipment for observing the sky, any astronomer can can see that. Any person who even plays with that will see that. The, the, the real position of the sun is not as per the Western astrology. So the whole zodiac is off. However, the, the Babylonian zodiac, and just like the Vedic zodiac as well, they are both following the ancient um, zodiac, the way including the precession of equinoxes, which is actually the accurate position. And that happens to be also the same, um, uh, the same, the same type of astrology that the elites are clearly using. If 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 anybody thinks that they are not using it, that they are mocking it because it's really ridiculous and crazy, then you know that they are always doing 180 on us, right? So so whatever whatever they are trying to discredit is exactly where we should be looking. And you see, when when I when I looked into the um, uh, the Enuma Elish, the the ancient Babylonian texts, uh, the the Corpus Hermeticum, um, the, the Gnostic texts, etc. If you know uh, kind of how to how to read it from that astro, astro, uh, astrological perspective, what you can derive from there is that basically at some point back in the day. The, the ones that we call the gods, so whether that be the, the Marduks and, and all those, all that gang from, from the, from the uh, Sumerian um, era, clearly somebody put, well, Marduk by, by Enuma Elish, put a mechanism in the sky to control humanity, to control our destiny, to control our lives. And these texts pretty open. Gosh. Sorry, we, we, we press that when somebody says something really incredible. Gosh. The gosh button. <laughs> the gosh button. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm take, sorry, take it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no, that oh my Skype God, just, just got gone again. again. Holy shit. This is probably one of the most explosive guests we've had on so far. Oh, Lawoni. I'm just going to keep going. Yeah, on. yeah. We're not giving up on this. All the way from the Arctic Circle. Whoever's trying to fuck with this, we're just going to keep... We'll fucking close down and start up a whole other stream. Yeah, <laughs> we have to. We're not giving up on this interview, Ola. Um, no, no problem, no problem. I guess I guess you're really pissing someone off here. Yeah, well, um, I, I think you're getting. I think you're crossing some boundaries that are not supposed to be crossed here. Maybe. Uh, who knows? Who knows? But like I say, this is not my first time with with massive technical issues when I get into these things. So, um, just to just to, sorry, guys, to kind of keep freezing on 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 the same thought here, but. Um, uh, Back into Enuma Elish, back to, to the Hermetic texts, um, Atum, or however the god is called, um, creates a mechanism, mechanism of control, some kind of net in which the planets get caught. And obviously their kind of properties or the energies that they radiate becomes um, in a way sort of trapped or controlled by this mechanism. So my question is, what is this mechanism? Some kind of very, very advanced technology, you know, mind you, uh, we're talking about technology that's way, way ahead of us. Um, this is something that probably we cannot even fathom and understand at our, our level. However, um, if, if I could come up with some specific um, um, uh, quotations here, but we're, we're dealing overall, most of the most, um, I think most information about this comes from the, the hermetic texts. Um, whereby um, it's, it's very obvious that there is a reincarnation cycle here on Earth, that if you do not know how to die, you will be tossed between um, heaven and Earth um, in your ignorance. So basically the lack of consciousness is called ignorance in, in the ancient texts. Um, and it's very, very clear that um, this is some kind of mechanism to extract energy um, from people to basically keep us in misery. Yeah, we, we, we have speculated on the show. Sorry to um, stop you there. Sure. We have speculated on the show before that this is just one big energy harvesting farm here on, in Absol this realm. Absolutely. Like a loose trap. 
Right, and 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 mind you, when you when you sort of, um, I guess everybody heard right this this story about Anunnaki coming here to mine gold, yes, right? Yes, of course, yes. And and this is kind of something that I that I mentioned um, uh, before. But um, think about it. So we have this really really advanced civilization with a massive advanced technology traveling, whether through space or through some portal. So however they got here. So they come here, and they really, really cannot get their act, act together to to mine themselves for gold. They they supposedly need slaves to do that for them. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, yeah. This is this is a theory that was sort of put out mainly by a guy called Michael Tellinger, if I'm not um, mistaken. That the these ancient gold mines, as he thought, were were for the Anunnaki. But like you say, why would you need to use something so basic as human <laughs> manpower? When you're when you're like potentially an interdimensional demigod, exactly, really? absolutely, absolutely, and and mind you, what what we're going by are some kind of texts, ancient texts that have been um, translated very often translated by people who did not understand the context, the historical context, or perhaps the mythological con uh, context. So we're dealing with misinterpretations very often of ancient texts, ancient languages. Uh, I, I guess everybody can appreciate that, that you know, this is, this is not English we're talking about here. We're talking ancient, ancient languages. So, so are we talking gold? Are we actually talking about mining for gold or are we dealing with a misinterpretation of a translation? Go back to um, to Latin, right? And, and sorry about my really bad English, but I need you to, to kind of understand this. But gold in Latin is aurum, right? Aurum, A-U-R-U-M, right? Okay. Are we? Are we? Uh, are, yep. you, are you with me? Yep. So, so the symbol of gold, um, even um, in the periodic table, is A U Aurum Aurum. What is that from? Is that aura? Because oh, wow. that sounds that's very very close to aura, They're right? They're mining for aura. Absolutely. So, are they mining for gold? Are we dealing with a misinterpretation, or are they mining for aurum, meaning the energy? They're mining for energy. These bastards ain't farming for parsnips. This is great research. Yeah, this is this is mind blowing stuff. And, and I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Or, uh, or, or uh, people are really digging this. Um, you know, saying this is this is truth bombs. We're getting all flames in the comment section here. So um, yeah, we're digging this information. So, so well, that's that's really I'm really I'm really glad to to hear that that people sort of can can feel it because you see a lot of those things. Um, you, you need to remember that, that a lot of the time we're dealing with purposeful misinterpretation because they don't want us to know. They don't want us to discover this. The, the astrology is being um, uh, sort of laughed at, right? It's, yeah. it's, it, it, it's, it's being ridiculed. Why? What is it that they don't want us to go and find out? So maybe what you're saying is like what? here in the west and in fact maybe potentially in the east as well the mainstream version of astrology is a bit like what nasa has done with our outer realm they've taken something created cartoon inverted version of it presented it to the massive saying here you go here's outer space or here's astrology but it's actually something far from the way that they interpret what outer space or astrology is yeah this would make perfect yeah. sense yeah, uh, um, absolutely. Or they basically obviously stood by and didn't do anything when the interpretation of astrology went off track. The, sure. the, the, way, the way it did, because right now, what do we do um, with astrology? We kind of use it to um, supposedly evolve. But think about it. If we are those, um, you know, incarnated gods, right? If, if we are part of the source, if we are so powerful on a, on a spiritual kind of level, then what kind of lessons do we need to learn here? Why do we need to learn here? Why do we need to learn the same thing over and over again? Hmm. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And, and when you actually study astrology and numerology, you will see that a lot of the, the time, those experiences, they don't disappear. So, so regardless of how much work on yourself you do, those experiences do not disappear. Why? Because we are connected 
to that energy above us, to those planets streaming some kind of information onto us to act, to respond, to kind of poke us, to trigger. Mm. And that lands probably through the chakra system. Um, and, you know, it's connected to us. We are the antennas to receive all this poking and triggering so that we can react, respond. And very often the reaction is what? Anger. You're pissed off. Misery. Because we're always, all the time, there's something wrong. Something goes wrong, right? What an amazing um, release of energy every single time that happens produces for them to harvest because that's what they want, right? They are here to gold, uh, to mine for gold, for aurum. If you think for, about what it says, for the energy. Yeah, I totally agree. Think about what it says in like the sort of Greek um, mythologies. You know, we are the playthings of the gods. Yeah. Well, imagine if what you've said is true, and I true, and I and I and I certainly think it is to a certain extent. If this if this realm is some sort of projection down from a higher realm and even the quantum uh, physicists say that we're being projected from an eighth dimensional hypercrystal down into 3d well if this meat suit is some sort of experiential uh, tentacle for higher dimensional realms it's like we're a sort of meat suit puppet literally a plaything. yeah yeah on strings you know and, and if our consciousness is trapped here and this is playing out on some sort of loop and something is harvesting the energy. Well, it would be like the human game. You can come in here, look, put your hand in a meat suit. Look what it's like. Mm. Look, you can get. Yeah. You might get. You might get pricked down there. Your finger might bleed, or you might have a really nice sensation and grab something nice in the meat suit. But if this experience had been hijacked, schismed, like the Gnostics say, the demiurge took control and started to hijack the energy of the uh, the grand illusion. I think you know this is uh, this is all making sense and this sounding. is deep shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've gone, <laughs> hey, we've gone full rabbit. We've gone full rabbit here tonight. No, it's excellent stuff. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that if you if you kind of really want to to understand what's going on here um, and and how it all hangs together, I mean, we we gotta go deep. We we, we have to go and and see sort of past the okay, this is this is a game. But w w what's what, what's the game about? Who, who's playing here? How, how does it hang together? Why is it so that, because I'm not sure about, you know, the viewers, have they ever had any astrology readings? But let me tell you this, find a good astrologer. And why is it, if we have free will, why is it that that astrologer can tell you what are your strengths? What are your traumas? What are your past experiences? How is that possible then, if we have free will? Do you know the best astrologer or fortune teller I've ever come across, um, Ola? I was on a trip. On. I was on a trip to Mexico this this uh, January. I went to Puerto Morales and I travelled to Mexico City, and near Tulum, we came out of this area in the jungle that was famous for mushrooms, and there were people selling mushrooms there. And this guy came out of the forest. He was dressed in a like a, a mushroom dress, a very crazy outfit. He appeared. It was like he was procedurally generated by the realm. He appeared from nowhere. He said, "I'm a, a travelling fortune teller." And he pulled out the Mayan calendar. Was this the mushroom dude? Yeah, the mushroom yeah, dude. Yeah, this yeah, is wearing a dress. This, this is all on my YouTube. I filmed it. And um, he pulled out, he said, you know, what's your chart? What's your birthday? And he literally pulled out his Mayan chart and he looked on it and he goes, right, okay. And he described me. I, I actually cried on the spot. It's on camera. I, I was like, he described me down to a T. And even what my, I believe my mission here is on a very exactly. deep level. It was incredible. Yeah. He did exactly the same for my wife. We were both literally um in in awe oh we've lost we've lost ola again oh, we've lost ola again uh, and for anyone that doesn't know what i'm talking about why well, you just call ola back um that's on the other channel it's on the um it's called the mushroom prophet is where i was in tulum yeah you anyone can see it. it was literally one of the most amazing moments of my life and we were just talking um we were just talking about having you know deep moments and then this guy was appeared out of nowhere gosh there you go there you go kevicus first um, yeah, Ola, you're back. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, so like I say, the mushroom prophet was the best astrologer ever. He just looked at the Mayan chart where my birthday, he knew I was the cosmic monkey, uh, which I, th I do think I play with illusion in this realm a little bit and, um, you know, show, show the clown simulation for what it is. So I was taken, taken back by this guy. No, absolutely, and 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 this is this is the most intriguing um, thing that, regardless of geography, regardless of where, um, 
Are you guys there? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, we, yeah we hear you loud and clear. We're just listening, we're just listening. Like you've, you've disappeared. Um, uh, regardless of geography, where these are coming from, there is always accuracy to them. So, 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 you know, how much are we told about those civilizations not having any contact with each other? It's absolute nonsense. And not only they had contact, but the contact was through something above them. Mm, something and, connected and, and them. Let me let me let me um, uh, sort of go a step further because if you think about where where do we get those um, flood of pictures from, right? I mean, we we get quite a lot of them, and um, I, I, I wish I could show them, but but just just bear with me. We have all these, whether it's Inca, Maya, the the Norse, obviously where I am, the Egyptians, uh, the, the 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 natives, the Navajo guys. Um, they all have the same kind of idea of this where we derive the flat Earth from, right? Which is the we we have some kind of flat space, and above it we have the firmament, we have the dome. Yeah. But when you look a little bit deeper around the dome, and when you read a little bit about that, there is always what, a, what on the dome? The zodiac, meaning the constellations and the sun and earth and the planets. So, so I started kind of looking a little bit into that and, and, and wondering, is this specifically about the flat earth or is it something more and this is where i kind of landed where everything came together for me and i realized that they were not only trying to tell us that perhaps we are either on a flat earth or perhaps what we perceive as flat earth is maybe a kind of bubble of a much bigger um, area, right? So we might be in a, like a kind of bio capsule or something like that. But also what they try to tell us is that there is something above us that controls us. There yes. is something above us and there's always references to the constellations, to the zodiac, to the, to the planet, whichever ge uh, geography, whichever cosmology lo you look into, there is the consistency of the story. How is it, how is it possible? What were they really trying to tell us? It seems and like the, some type of construct. Exactly. And when you when you look into the um, PC Sophia, which is the, the, the one of the Gnostic texts, um, when in PC Sophia, um, Jesus ascends, right? First, and that's a different story, but first he goes down, not up. He goes down. He, um, he goes into the underworld. And only afterwards, he comes back and he goes through the, the spheres and the aeons as described in Peace Sophia. And the interesting thing is that the zodiac is at the level of the aeons. And as he ascends, he reduces the effect or, or the, 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 the kind of uh, the, the effect that the zodiac has on us by one third. So, so even in those texts, it's being confirmed that obviously that mechanism is above us. So are we dealing with permanent or are we dealing with some kind of perhaps a cross in dimensions? So, so you see, because quite often people think that the permanent, oh, it must be some kind of literally, I don't know, physical um, uh, thing. But perhaps it's not. It's not physical. Perhaps what we what we're talking about is a step is a kind of change in dimensions. Yeah. Astrology, is it really the science of the stars or is it the science of the astral realm above us? Yeah. Yeah, this is this is very interesting and, and it leads me nicely onto what my next subject I want to bring up with you. It's the moon. Right. Okay, now the moon is something that we talk on the show a lot about. One of our team members who won't be joining us maybe until after you've left, um, Lee, is an occultist who talks about the moon within a food cycle here on Earth. You know, we've t we, we, we study um, um, other people that say that, you know, the moon could actually be a reflection within the firmament of, of, of a greater Earth. Um, Ola, what, what is the moon? Well, I, I think that, you know, 100% answer, um, I, I don't think anybody can provide that at this stage. 
Um, I can I can kind of tell you from the um, perspective of astrology, from the perspective of looking into the the texts, and the perspective of alchemy. Okay, when I when I say alchemy, um, I do not mean that probably the alchemy that everybody thinks about. I I come from a from a line from Eastern Europe where um, we're talking about feminine alchemy. We're talking about the, the the kind of the women, the line of the witches, if you like. Um, witches meaning wise women. That's why they were burnt at stake because they knew how to operate above the matrix. And the so 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 the moon from that perspective is absolutely not something natural. This is not a natural satellite. This is not something that's just uh, um, appeared there. Um, in Enuma Elish, um, we are told that Marduk places the moon in that position. So clearly that is some kind of um, uh, construct which is, which is placed on purpose. Um, and uh, when you when you kind of look a little bit at the moon, and I know that right now in the new age, especially, and I think uh, in the new age uh, very strongly, there is this cult of the moon, right, amongst the women. But I think it's been so ingrained in our consciousness that that probably most of the women. Quite often, um, I'm not saying that necessarily the uh, the people here on on, on this um, podcast, but perhaps just uh, in general, there is a lot of women who kind of feel drawn to the moon. They feel connected to the moon, and that is just such a deception. I absolutely fight with it um, whenever I can, um, because you see, from the perspective of the ancients and the the feminine alchemy the moon has been put in place to replace or to to take the attention from venus to itself to because venus for the ancients and that you will find amongst the the mayans um in ba babylonia in the vedic text it was venus that was very very important venus holds the keys to escape the matrix. This is what the establishment, this is what the gods, obviously the gods uh, in quotation marks, this is what they feared. This, so this, they needed... Mm -hmm. I was just about to say this is very interesting because from, from some of my studies into um, something called the law of one and some of the beliefs of potentially of the elites is that they actually believe they are, they are a group a soul construct from Venus. Yeah. That the highest level, what we refer to, and it's, I don't like the term, the Luciferian bloodlines, they actually believe um, that they have um, a genetic affinity to Venus. This is something that I've, I've heard time and time and time again. That's where their bloodline comes, comes from. Comes from, yeah. And also that the, the blue, the blue skinned yes. demigods of the Hindu and the Vedic. Uh, religions that's venus as well that they are venus mm. this is something that i've also heard is this is this something that resonates with your uh, research ola well i i think i think that what we are um always dealing with is, is that they invert everything they take all the original sim symbology, all the original um, meaning, the alchemy, and they try to invert it. They make it theirs when it's not theirs. They make it um, negative when it's originally not negative. I mean, think about the association of a pentagram, right? It's it's negative, and they and they took it and they inverted it as well. But the original pentagram comes from Venus, and it's a very feminine symbol. Um, Venus is called the um, uh, twin sister of the earth so so i to me what they are doing is pretty much like with everything that they are doing they are inverting certain um information which is originally let, let's call it positive but they inverted that they, they try to make it theirs they try to assign and ascribe certain meaning to it um to to make it to make it theirs because they know the power of it yeah, absolutely. This is so, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, yeah, from from what I know, the moon appeared roughly ten thousand years ago. 
through from what I, from different studies that I've looked into that the moon was certainly brought here, which is which is what you're saying as well. In your opinion, Ola, or I mean, I don't know if you have an opinion on this. Do you think the moon is a physical object or or a non physical object? <sighs> I, I, I think that I think that um, with a lot of those things, we also have to allow ourselves to to probably kind of um, how to say it give us give us space to understand that perhaps not everything is as black as white as we perceive it sure. because of our level of understanding. Whether it's physical, whether you can land something on it, um, some say yes. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised whether it's something again so advanced that perhaps it it changes that's why it's it's you know everyone who is looking at it and saying it's just a reflection or the other people saying well yes you can actually land there perhaps everybody's correct because we haven't yet arrived at the level of understanding what it is yeah i think that's um i think that's actually a very fair a fair comment actually um, you know, th- th- there's the book "Who Built the Moon," the stories of them f- sending a, um, a projectile to the moon and it ringing like a bell, like it was hollow, which yeah. uh, which makes it sound like um, a, a man-made or a, a construct of some type. Then we have the whole reflection hologram thing, and th- yeah. there's all the videos of people that have taken of the moon where it looks like there's um, a rendering line going across it. Have you seen this? No, 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 I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah these long, long shot videos of the moon that's close up through these really good telescopes. If you watch them, sometimes it looks like the moon is rendering itself, you know, like on an old school computer. Really? Where, yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know what it's called, but there's loads of videos on it on YouTube and it's all from people's own own recordings. You just think like we're, we're it's hammered into us at a very young age about the moon, isn't it? Like, um, I can't remember. Someone just put it up in the comments. The cow jumped over the moon, like the nursery rhyme. And it's the, it's, we're taught about the moon from a young age to believe you know essentially what it is mm. i mean lee repoff i'll just put it on the screen here he says the moon is transparent when waxing and waning it does appear to be interesting comment yeah 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 i mean uh you know i think that with with the moon there is a lot of a lot of even even the sort of pseudoscientific um uh, aspects of it if you if you kind of look at the um at the fact that we are not ever able to see the other side of the moon well if it's natural then how is it possible that you know that that, that everything is so um, synchronized that we never happen to, to to see that that side? Well, it's you, just a, you know the official story um, of the geocentrist or heliocentrist or whatever they're called that the the spinning of the uh, and I've seen this a NASA person say this the spinning of the Earth on its axis is so perfectly timed with the spinning of the Moon. That it happens at the same time, so we always Bullshit. see the same side. Yeah, They've exactly. actually said, "How could I mean, that possibly be true?" Exactly. That, 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 that's my the, point. No way. That's that, my that, point. That's absolute nonsense. I mean, come on, come that, on. That is, that's more than nonsense, Ola. That's actually like that's a direct insult. That's yeah, that's, that's a joke. That's an absolutely. occult inverted inverted insult. I think it's like yeah. There absolutely. you go, Mark. We mentioned inversion again, mate. Yeah, there you go, Mark. You got that one. Um, <laughs> absolutely. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad on, we sorry. covered the moon because you know the moon matrix is something. The mentally ill, no, but not. <laughs> you had to get that one in. Right, um, right. Last thing on the moon, Lee, who's not with us at the moment, he talks about us living within an energetic food chain, which is kind of what we've been talking about—the loose harvesting. And he also talks about the moon as the sun projects energy onto our realm or into our realm. The moon actually extracts it out, and this is why we have the the uh, phenomena of the moonlight at night if you stand in moonlight it's actually cooler than being in the shade yeah which yeah. which physicists and you know and nasa people they'll tell you a billion things to try and explain that doesn't make sense have you are you familiar with the notion of the moon feeding upon energies of the earth and the term food for the moon have you ever heard this um i've i've not i've not uh, specifically heard about those terms however i i am familiar with, with with what you just described and um like i say to me the moon is it's it's beyond it's beyond obvious it is not natural it is not something that we understand i absolutely um in in the sort of alchemical um uh, line or or the feminine line the moon um you, you know you you've probably seen the, the all those pictures of the 
way of of wolves howling to the moon, right? And yep. and people think it's such a cool thing, the, the 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 wolf howling to the to the moon. But in feminine alchemy, um, the they would say that actually the that's that's that, that's nothing positive. The wolves have been always protecting us because the full moon, the moon is stealing the soul. Can I tell you a story, Ola? You must have heard sure. of, of the full moon party that's in Thailand on a particular island um, every month. It's world famous. It's been going for like 20, 30 years, the full moon party. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, I actually, I'm, a, I'm an MC apart from doing this podcast. I'm a rapper. And right, right up until 2019, I was the host of the full moon party, the drum and bass stage in Koh Phang Yang in Thailand. And I did it for about 10 years. And I did it at least every New Year's Eve, which usually had a full moon as well. And it's well famous because on that particular beach, on a full moon, and at certain times of the year, I think it's May, May in particular, there's a moon that literally is so big in the sky, it's, it's like, it looks like it's touching the horizon and it's the biggest duck fucking thing you can see. You look f up wow. that way, it's there. You look left, it's over there. You look right. It's incredible. <laughs> wow. Um, so I had the experience of sort of standing on a roof in front of 10, 20,000 people and um, uh, having, a, having a hand in the energy play that was going on. And boy, oh boy, when you're in front of that moon, I, I, I constantly felt like the energy was being drawn away and everyone is looking yeah, up at the moon. It, it was, Absolutely. it was um, incredible. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. I mean, look, um, just, just to kind of not, not leave it um, without, without any specific comment. Um, I, I did mention Venus and, and I didn't really say anything about it. You see, um, uh, back in the day, back thousands, thousands of years ago, before before the moon was there, and by the way, all those stories that we are, um, you know, we are the creation of those uh, pseudo gods. That's bullshit as well, um, obviously. So, so we are much, much. Um, we, we've been here much longer than they have been, um, and. Back in the day, the I, I don't want to call it a worship of Venus, but Venus, there was reverence of Venus, let's put it this way, because Venus was sort of, with her movement, she was... Um, guiding and teaching a lot of alchemical mysteries. Um, for example, uh, how many people know that Venus, Venus has phases, and now we have the moon. Moon has phases, right? It's the 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 the, the first quarter, the second, etc., etc. So so when moon was placed there, of course he had to represent the same qualities. So now moon has phases, and of course a lot of people will say, but hold on a minute, how can you not? How can you deny it being connected to women when, of course, we have the menstrual cycle and we have the the number of weeks is correct because it's the forty weeks, the two two hundred eighty days, uh, and and we have the 13 lunar months and all that stuff. But actually, when you calculate that, if you know about Venus phases um, and about the, the, the movement and the behavior of Venus, Venus um, takes around 260 days, which is the same amount of days as the pregnancy from conception, um, to um, go into the, 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 uh, the phase called Venus is the morning star or evening star. And this is exactly the type of phases that the Mayans are specifically talking about in their ancient texts, in, in, in their calendar. It's based on those cycles. Um, and and but and mind you, when you even think about, um, I I don't really want to go sort of too much into the into the feminine here, but um, is it is it really normal? Does it really feel normal that a woman is able to um, have a child or to 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 sort of get pregnant twelve or thirteen times a year? Look at look at the other species. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not in for any Darwin nonsense here either. But, 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 but you know what I'm saying, right? There is much more control and much more predictability for the other species than for us. Why? Sure. Because, because they wanted the slaves. So they took away the natural cycles. Yeah, think about it. Every other animal has to be in season or in exactly. Heat. Exactly. But for us, it's inverted again, right? Because when actually 
a woman is menstruating, supposedly this is the, the safest time. But the time when she can get pregnant, well, that's anyone's guess because it's kind of in the middle. But maybe plus or minus five days or so three days because who knows, uh, you know, there's just so many, so many, so many factors in here, which ends up in what? In constant fear, misery, uncertainty, unpredictability. Who is that serving? Is that nature? That's not nature. You make a very good point. Oh, no, no, this people, people really, saying, really good people say, gosh, in the comment section, I haven't even pressed the button. It's the wrong oh, one. Oh, you've changed the buttons now. Uh, that deserves the gosh. Yeah, I've never even considered this notion before. Gosh. That um, we're pretty much one of the only mammals that, that doesn't have a season for mating. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, definitely some tampering has gone on with here. And I'm definitely down with um, the notion that the uh, the Anuna or these ancient... Um, demigods or whatever they claim to be that certainly didn't create us here um they seem that they potentially tampered with something that was already here maybe downgraded us well, tri uh, tricked us absolutely and they tamper with it cyclically right i mean right now we have another example of them trying to tamper with it yeah let, let's talk about that a little bit while we just while i'll just still throw this you. out there as well so we talked earlier about the anunnaki come in and mining and, and that kind of stuff so obviously, I don't know if you've heard of a, a researcher um, called Mark Passio, uh, Ola, but I follow his work. Um, right. I've followed him for years. He, he does a um, presentation called Cosmic Abandonment, and he talks about the Anunnaki coming down and, and doing this gold mining. And he says that they took... He, he doesn't say this is what his is determined from his own research. So he's not saying this is what happened. This is just what he has come up with. So he's saying that the Anunnaki took a species which were already here and then inset a small part of their own DNA into the species that was naturally on this planet. So maybe that could be why that we haven't got the same cycle as the rest of the animals. I'm just putting out there. That's not what I believe. I'll just, yeah, it's just come we, to we my We all have now. Nephilim genetics to some yeah. extent. Because maybe their DNA um, being inserted into us, that's what has changed the cycle. Possibly. I don't know. I'm just putting out well, there the idea. Well, um, yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from, but the, you know, the problem with that is that that's not um, the history. That's not what we know from history because um, even up until the 70s, you might be surprised, but in the in, in some of the indigenous um, uh, amongst the indigenous people or, or maybe kind of those living uh, still closer to the nature, um, ability to control the cycle was still preserved. Okay. Women wow. were still able to do that. And back in the days, a lot of the ancient texts are misinterpreted because they talk about women. Mm, I think even specifically um, uh, Gardner talks about it, um, Lawrence Gardner, okay. in, in some of his books that... Um, back in a day, back in the sort of Jesus times, a woman was only meeting her husband once and either, you know, a, a child was created out of that uh, once a year, sorry, once a year, either a child was created out of that or not. But other than that, they had to be separate. That's not correct. It's not that they were seeing each other once a year. It's just that she was able to get pregnant once a year. Okay. So we actually have that kind of information going back not far, uh, not even far, far, far um, uh, back, um, that the cycle was, the women had still ability to control the cycle, but we've lost it. So, so what, what, has, what, what, what happened? Well, they've been playing with satellites, they've been playing with, with much more electricity, they've, they've been playing with other things that um, took away a lot of our natural um, abilities, abilities of the body. Been irradiated. Absolutely. They messed up with, with our glands, with our hormonal systems. Hmm. This makes perfect sense. I was completely unaware of what you just said, that the, the, the ability to control the, the cycle was, was kept by yeah. some women living in nature yeah. right to the 70s. And I guess what's, the, what's really changed just since the 70s would be the electromagnetic soup of that we're all bathing in yeah the yeah. satellites um exactly. If, uh, exactly. Oh, wait a minute uh, are satellites real oh, i don't know <laughs> i definitely saw something going up in the sky the Schwab towers it. elon musk sent some sort of weaponry up into the sky um 
when, when was that? A couple of years ago when we saw those lights? Yeah, when he, he when sent out yeah. Starlink. 5G yeah. Starlink satellite, yeah. They've sent something up there. Well, how high it is, I have no idea. But um, It's just brushing the firmament. Yeah, yeah. Just underneath the technology that's already up there. So let's, let's take it right up to where ask our current situation and what's happened in the last two years, Ola. What, how could have this been foretold or, or uh, predicted using what you've learned from, from Babylonian astrology? Right, so so this is this is something I would absolutely love to have a uh, have an ability to show you something, but um, uh, I'll try to explain it. So um, we are so so the elites specifically on this one are following Mars cycles. Okay, these are these are called uh, helical rising of Mars cycles, and uh, those cycles last two years, or sort of from one rising to another. It's it, it's kind of more or less two years. And in 2019, end of October, we had a helical rising of Mars in Virgo. Um, and uh, in Virgo specifically, if anybody is into any level of um, uh, astrology, you know that Virgo is amongst other things to do with health. So uh, helical rising of Mars, it kind of sets the tone for the next two years. What can we expect? What kind of energy are we going to be playing with? So you see, this is this is how to look at it. They know, they know how this works. They know the mechanism. What they can do is they can kind of utilize it. They know naturally what kind of energy is going to be in the air. So so what they do is they kind of um, try to basically use it to their own advantage. So heliacal rising of Mars in Virgo meant change of your routine, change of the way you operate, uh, some kind of health crisis. Potentially, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that there was definitely going to be a health crisis. It just meant that it was very easy to convince people that there was, which is exactly what they did. This is exactly what they did, right? So, so they basically they were surfing on that wave. So, mind you, this is happening end of October, twenty nineteen, right? Wait a minute. We wait a minute. Being... In, in October, they were doing. Um... Uh, exercise 201 or what is it that's yeah, right yeah, yeah. event 201 because they knew that I mean those cycles this is something that we can predict you know years ahead this is this is not a wow. surprise this is something that we know about you can you know we have software now we can we can calculate more or less right based on I mean of course you cannot probably calculate to a, to a minute or a second because because the planet can still kind of surprise you but it's but but you know it's gonna show up <laughs> you know it's gonna show up so 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 what they did they were basically going ahead with those cycles so they're riding out Mars... the, the mechanisms of the of the sky machine that's above us the these cycles Absolutely. that have been known about for millennia. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. They know about it and they are using it and they are laughing in our faces by denying and ridiculing the, this, this whole concept. So Mars raises in um, Scorpio and sets the tone for the next two years. So what do we have the next two years, 2020, 2021? We have the pandemic, right? We have the the, 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 the whole nonsense. We, we are being told to sit at home. So our routines are changing. So everything according to the interpretation is happening. And that goes on until when? Until the next um, uh, the next time Mars is again rising, right? So that cycle ends, the new one starts. When was that? 2021 December. Hmm. What happened? Heliacal rising of Mars in Scorpio. What's that to do with? That's to do with war, hostility, issues. And what do we have? Well, we have a, 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 an impression, illusion of war playing out next door to my country, right? World War 33. Right. Hmm. So, so, so if, you are, if you know how to play with those energies, how to understand them, and they do, they utilize the fact that it's like this message is being sent into the ether and people just buy into it. 
Yeah. So you see, uh, what they I, I think what's, what we're really, really dealing with is probably two groups that are on that highest, highest level fighting with each other. Yeah. And it seems like one of them is perhaps not fully following um, uh, this. Um, the reason the reason I'm saying that is because um, I think when when was that was it was it earlier this year or was it end of last year when they were trying to come up with this uh, other um, pandemic nonsense? Um, yeah, and that didn't you see that didn't cut that n- nothing happened with that it we, just went away. We right? have, we have also postulated that there could be a group that are putting out things that are deliberately stupid, ridiculous, and obvious in an attempt to wake up the the peasants on the farm um and it, and when we see what's going on with things like monkeypox and uh these other things they're trying to force in the face they seem to be increasingly preposterous yeah um, yeah so yeah um we I, i've said it before I, and, and in one of my songs there are warring factions probably two um and it seems like one of them is more in line with the green um injection agenda and the other one is a little bit more world war three um, neither of them are great, uh, as you can imagine, but it does seem there are two, there are two competing factions for sure. Enki, Enki and Elil. Like right. The, yes. Well, either, either that or are we dealing with the, um, the Devas and Asuras, right? <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. I've, I've also heard the, uh, the idea that the, the, the serpent in the Garden of Eden could actually represent Enki giving um Yeah, but give. you see that's that's again this is this is this is what happens when um I, I when you when you're dealing with the ancient texts, with the with the sacred text, the, the, there are sort of there are, there are several levels at which they need to be understood. There is the astrology, there is the the um, sacred geometry, biology, alchemy, um, eschatology, etc., etc. If you don't understand these levels, you will never understand. You will just miss the interpretation. So I know that the the serpent gets translated as the Enki, but I think this is when you miss the alchemy bit. And and quite often those those things are obviously um, analyzed by the by the scholars. And the scholars very often have absolutely zero understanding or even interest in uh, uh, such things as astrology, right, or sure. numerology, uh, gematria. Etc. So they don't even go down those paths. So, so, so I'm, I'm very, very um, uh, cautious when, when, when uh, those that I, I think this is also the end of the era of um, authority, right? So, so I don't really care um, if you have some titles or not because that doesn't really say <laughs> that doesn't really mean that that means that, that, means, you, that means diddly squat nowadays. <laughs> exactly exactly so 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 um i think that when you when you sort of enter the the element of alchemy the serpent starts it, it means it means something slightly different and but that's that's a whole whole big new conversation sure um we, we're, we're kind of going into the into the, the the alchemy what really happened in in uh, in in eden and uh, what is eden yeah and i think and i and i and i can say right now um we're definitely going to want to get you back on the show again to to, have that, to have that conversation. Um, everyone's oh, been everyone's you. been really blown away. Um, you know, we we like to go really deep on the show, and you've taken it even a little bit deeper than some people were expecting, which is um, oh. which is, yeah no hey on this show that's no, this is this is great research honestly yeah we're we're all actually blown away. We're just getting up to coming near to um, the half ten um, uh, time where we'll have a little miniature break. So. With this knowledge, Ola, that you've that you've accumulated, in, and you seem to have really, really got something here with um, the misappropriation of astrology, how can we how can we use this to go forward? And, and what does this what does this really mean for us on a fundamental level? Well, um, what, what I what I really really suggest to everybody is that everybody finds out finds out what is your code. What cards have you been dealt by the matrix? Because in those cards, effectively what's written is your limitations. How are they going to try to go after you? How are they going to try to mess up with you? You know, there is, uh, so we're kind of, we're dealing with two things. First of all, we're, we're part of this mechanism 
it's very hard to work against it. At this level, it's still very hard to work against it. So, so it's it's really really useful to know what you're dealing with so that you can navigate it. So it's a little bit like we're in this ocean. You can either get a surfboard and you can surf it, or you can drown. Okay. So I suggest that everybody understands what is your code using astrology, numerology, um, whatever other ways you 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 may think uh, you may think about. But but probably most of the time it comes down to those two. Um, find out what, what is your code, what you're dealing with. And the, the second, the second sort of part of it, and this is where we again, maybe, maybe next time we can we can sort of go into that. Um, the reason, the reason why I am so big on the alchemy, feminine alchemy, is because back in the days, um, there's been there's been certain certain wisdom, certain knowledge, which basically held the key to how um, how to escape this mechanism. It's been long forgotten. It's been corrupted. Um, it's been it's been changed and denied. But luckily, there are still some remnants here and there of this wisdom, and it absolutely needs to be brought back. And um, this is this is the way you know we rise. This is the way we rise above. Yes. God damn it! That's what I'm talking about. Ola Wolny, you have been a guest and a half, or at least a guest and 33%. <laughs> no, it's been absolutely fantastic to have you on. We're all a little bit um, a little bit speechless after some of those metaphysical bombs you just dropped. Fucking um, brilliant. Yeah, listen, we'll be in contact in early 2023 to have you on for part two because I feel like we barely scraped the surface there. You've been fantastic. Beautiful. Thank you so much. No, no, thank you for coming on, Ola. Thank honestly. you very much. Rise above. Thank you so much, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Rise Whoa. Above, generate, generate, rise above, extinguish fear, that rise was above. Really above. fucking cool, man. Thank you, God. That was a large amount of rabbit. Holy shit. I've Big. got some stuff to show you. Is she still online? <laughs> no, I will just say goodbye. They, right, Ola's gone. Right, so yeah, Ola Wolney. Wow. That was dope. Live from the Arctic Circle. Right, I think. What we should do now is have a very short break because we haven't got home a beats tonight. He's, on, he's, um, he's got a bad back, so he's resting up so that he can be in the studio tomorrow and keep slaving away for me. Now, straight after this very short break, which is literally going to be one music video, um, I'm going to open up the phone line to someone that's in the comments section and that's got some complaints and some grievances to air about Rise Above, mainly just about me. Um, and I'm also going to be talking about some of the other concerns and complaints that have been turning up on Telegram this week. We're going to have an impromptu customer services. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Let's do it. And, and Master Lee should be along as well. But in the meantime, this is an artist that came to my um, attention this week through, guess what, Terra Slim. Big up Terra Slim. Bad slave. Um, this guy's called Connor Cassidy. Now, this guy's different. He's, he's a rapper, but not a conventional rapper. I believe he's like Italian American. Nice. That's where his like sound and style comes from. Um, so yeah, this is Connor Cassidy with Godspeed. Very original. We'll be back in like three minutes. Yeah, what a sound for, what I'm born for. Yeah, it keeps calling, keeps on calling. I keep falling, keep on falling. Now I'm all in. And y'all should know that the family is what it's all for. Doing everything it's called for. You know, I only want to press it when it's on me. Pour the clutch and make the motor move with God speed. I don't only want it all, I want the encore. And when I finish, man, it's all yours. Say, love me. Baby, who you got to pay for on if not me? I heard her yelling out the only motivation I need. God speed. All for the team, we all for the people, they only all for the green See, yet yeah, they only hate to climb it up Sliding on the lava of this mountain, I've been climbing up Even at the top, it isn't high enough, but oh my The world is so small, the universe is so wide Not to mention a lie, a new dimension of mine Connected as blockchain to the soul, the power's my vibe With my fascination and overdrive Imagination expanded onto the other side I heard the sky was the limit, turns out my mother lied Just tie a rope to my suit, I'm back at a Falcon Pack soul food, some whole foods to keep us alkaline It's about time I got up out of here Lost my fear beyond the atmosphere Heart can tell me when I'm already on now Heart can the name here when it's already I should know that the family is what it's all for 
Doing everything is called for You know I only want the pressure when it's on me For the clutch and make the motor move with God's speed I don't only want it all, I want the encore And when I'm finished, man, it's all yours, say la vie Baby, who you got to pay for on if not me? I heard him yelling out the only motivation I need God's speed All for the team USA made, the vehicle isn't European I might learn to speak Korean after Mandarin Iron sharp and tired if we train enough to handle it Cutting off the cannabis Trying to make my own high shortcuts of transient Me, I want a long ride, move like an assassin When I plug into the animus Greatness in my blood, get all these handlers unanimous More than in the rare for Not a game I can't fix if I prepare for it Learn from failure if I fail, I only fail forward Victory with every sale, I only sail towards it Get my house in order Body, mind, and balance Spirit moving over borders Sick with love in these days It's like a rare disorder Whiskey over teardrops Frozen solid When people try to kill you That's the way you know you got it And y'all should know That the family is what it's all for Doing everything it's called for You know I only want depression When it's on me For the clutch And make the motor move With God's speed I don't only want it all, I want the encore But when I'm finished, man, it's all yours, say la vie Baby, who you got to pay for if not me? I heard him yelling out the only motivation I need Godspeed, all for the team Go get your ass off Twitter, follow your dreams I've seen so many people die before they time Walk around and self load because they chose the wrong life Who am I to judge? That's for when my time is up Free at last and free for real I made a promise to the promised land that we could heal But this ain't adequate, let's renegotiate the deal Far too polite, need a translator like Kim Peel To get emotions out It's tear gas and rubber bullets flood the locals out Enough tears to fill an ocean out Fear became rage, we march on to show the globe about it Caught up in the outrage, you can't evolve without change Culture needs an update, not another downgrade Turning up the soundscape, try a new key God, you said you wanted how late Guess it's on me, and y'all should know that the family is what it's all for. Doing everything it's called for You know I only want depression when it's on me Hold the clutch and make the motor move at God's speed And I don't only want it all, I want the encore And when I finish, man, it's all yours, say la vie Baby, who you got to pay for if not we? I heard him yelling out the only motivation we need God's speed God speed Shit. One, two, we're back. It's rise above. Quite a dwelling peasants. <laughs> Hi, everyone. How you doing? Now, I know that that probably wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but I happen to think that that dude has his own flex. I like. I like. It's the, different. It was different. I liked. I like people that are original. Terra Slim really likes him. Um, Credo says his voice sounds like he said it backwards and it was reversed. Oh my god! Like we've got a caller straight away. Go on, answer it. Get no him on. mucking about. Let me just. I need to put the Bluetooth on. Hold up, hold up, guys. Hello, one sec, Mark. We just need to put the Bluetooth on and connect. Is he on already? Fuck yeah, me, he's keen. He's keen straight away. Right. So okay, let me just get him connected to the roadcast. Traditionally, we'd like to invite people. Like we tell them when to call right. in, but you know, we'll... one two. Welcome to Rise Above. Can you hear us? Yeah, can hear you loud and clear. Is that Mark? That is me. Okay, um, Mark, welcome to Rise Above. Thank you very much for calling in because, like I said, if you've got some like complaints... I think he's quite, he's quite low in my headphones. Is he? Let me turn him up. I don't, I want, I don't want any... Mark, can you just say something, mate, just so we get a volume? Yeah, thank you for having me. That's quite... Can everyone hear Mark? Yep, yeah, okay, I think so. All right, Mark, what, 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 is, um, what is your uh, grievance with, um, with what's going on on the show or the direction of the show, as you put it? Well, what I want to understand is what you believe this symbolism is doing for us. What symbolism particularly? Like your Ra tree, you know, your 33 and your RA, and then the, the dates that you took the people away to, the 9th to 11th of September, and the prize ticket. I just want to know what your understanding of that is first. Well, I mean, before I go into it, what would be, well, let me ask, how much have you watched the show? I stopped watching last April when Andy called me an idiot live on air. This was that this April twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty two. Okay, so this April a couple of a couple of months ago. 
Okay. Um, well, six months ago. Six months ago. Okay. So if you've been watching the show up to six months ago, you must have like heard what we've been talking about when we're talking about what this numerology means. When we say we're taking the numbers back. Yeah, I mean we've been pretty we've been pretty clear about that. The, the these sim, the symbols and numbers are not inherently evil. There's no such thing as an evil number or an evil symbol. What's evil is the intent that has been put into it. So and what's if, your intent? Well, what do you think our intent is from watching the show? I asked you. <laughs> well, I, I, about me so, right, right, okay, well, okay, 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 okay. Let, let's, let's just address okay. one thing at a time. One thing at a time. So we started the show in 2020 when yep. the COVID union struck, and I remember your first show. I watched yeah, yeah. It. No, that's awesome, man. Um, it was I, really, really good when I first watched it. It okay. was like a breath of fresh air at first seeing something like this. That's cool. So Especially basically, with the current climate that was happening. Right. Okay. So our intent with the show, Lance said to me that he he wants to start a project and start his own show. And I said to him that I'd like to be a part of it. And our intent was to get information out there about, A, what was going on, like currently in 2020 with all the mass genocide, and B, yeah. talk about our research that we've done as a team. People like Magix, who's on the show, he's an absolutely avid researcher. Same as Omer Beats and all of us. We're basically trying, our intent, it was just to bring knowledge well, to the table. Well, let me ask you, Mark, to, do you think our intent absorb. would seem like genuine at the start and you think we've gone yes. astray? Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's exactly. So, and it's not only me. There's quite a few of your listeners that agree with what I'm saying. Okay, so let me ask you, is it is it because we've gone more in an entertainment direction is it because we now look better and sound better and we and no we're no and... not that you look and sound better i can understand that you want to um, level up the quality of the show i understand that fully okay but yeah towards towards more of the gimmick side yeah that i think that that is a bit of a problem as well because well, it takes away the seriousness of what is actually happening well i think Again, I'll, I'll just address that one right. we do like to keep it a little bit light on the show like we do like to a little have bit a little... like we take yeah. the piss out of the whole thing. Yeah, as we, far we... as I'm concerned, that's part of one of the core ethoses of Rise Above, or part of the core ethos. So basically, we try we 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 bring serious stuff to the table. Like we've just had a very serious presentation from our guest tonight. Yeah. Same as when Master Lee comes and does the deep presentation, it's very serious. But at the same time, we like to keep things light and entertainment. You know, people like some of the comments we get in our well, comment section are fucking golden, mate. Here, here's here's my intent at the moment, right? My intent, Mark, is not to be one of these content creators or people in the alternative media that are constantly pumping everyone with negativity every week, explaining the problem, explaining the prison that's being built around us. What we're trying to do here is actually take the edge off of the dark occult sorcery that's being foisted on everyone by using comedy and satire to deconstruct it, to literally de-weaponize it. You know, because of things that we've come up with on the show and with other people like Sheep Farm, some of these terms like the Britney Spears concert or some of these the stupid... three dark finish. The triple dark finish and stuff like that. Well, people... I understand that. I, I'm, with, I'm with you fully on that, trying to trick that algorithm. I understand okay. that. I have watched shows where you've explained that. Master it's Lee, more like sometimes the humour that you give is very... is like you'll be on about something very serious or dark and then you'll, be on, then you'll do it in humour. And yeah. to my understanding from my research, when you do that, that's when things sink into people's minds easier. That's why they use yeah, comedy that, that to, use why, it to yeah. change culture. That is why I use it. I, same reason that we use the memes, uh, Mark. It's it's to actually soften people's uh, consciousness up and help to get these concepts in. I'm very open that I use exactly the same methods and techniques that the occult is used against us. I'm very open about that, and I have been since day one, Mark. Cause this is why I think maybe you're a little bit... You've got a bit of a misconception because potentially you might have missed some quite important bits of what we've been saying on the show. I've been very open about this. I use the repetition. I use, okay, can I use, you, I use can you numbers. explain the, the, the dates of the ninth to the eleventh? What does what does that mean? Well, we 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 would we we had twelve weeks to put on an event, and uh, we had that we had that uh, land. It was available on nine eleven, and we already know it's a very powerful weekend used by the occultists. So what we thought we would do is we would take that powerful weekend. Which is which is currently full of misery. Yeah, and currently used for negative energy harvesting. And what we thought we would do is we would reappropriate it and recatalyze that potential negative energy. And it was also under a harvest moon. 
it was a very powerful experience, Mark. If you were there, I don't think we'd have, be having this conversation. Welcome, Master Lee. Perfect timing. Well, salutations, everybody. Can you hear me Salutations. Okay? Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, it for me, um, it was just, um, it was a bonus for us to be able to get that weekend. And when I said, well, we've got 9-11, everyone was like, yes, perfect. We can conduct our own ritual in the face of the other ritual that just happened to go on that weekend. And again, which the, was the with, grief ritual of the, of the queen dying. Yeah. And again, with the, the flyer and the logo for Rotary, I'm actually wearing a Rotary t-shirt now. So get the peasant cam on that. Me too, funny enough. Yeah, yeah. Get the peasant cam on that. So the Rotary, where we use the two pillars as the T's, yeah, and obviously the 33 in the middle. So it's got Freemasonic... Um, ish to it yeah free no, but you, so but you, hang on just let me there's, there's two seconds let me you finish. asked us let to finish. explain it mark yeah, we're, we're actually finish. explaining it in detail so now while we've yeah. got all these symbols all, all over us basically yeah? the freemasonry isn't like i said in the telegram chat i said there's there's two sides there's always a light and a dark freemasonry isn't inherently evil okay but it's evolved into something which you know some lodges are evil some freemasonry lodges is actually the practice of, of occulting and hiding yeah. the ancient knowledge that has been that precedes every one of our world religions, including Christianity. And, it, it's and it's hidden to stop us raising our consciousness. Yes. So, so what we're so doing is using... we're using this knowledge to help people raise their consciousness. We're openly telling people this knowledge. And I'm openly telling... it's kind of inversion. It's what? kind of inversion. You're kind of... Because you're, yeah, you're I am using... inverting it. I'm exactly... That's what I'm doing. I'm reinverting it back because this so who's is... who's the rabbit? Who's the rabbit that's getting roasted? Is, is that an analogy so we, of us? So, so the what we say down the rabbit hole, oh we go God. down the rabbit hole on the show. So yeah? we, so we, we say, tell you haven't watched the show, Mark. Being, So we say, we, uh-huh. we say, hang on, uh-huh. hang on, hang on, everyone, chill out, chill out. So basically, we say, I the have show, watched the show. I understand going down the rabbit hole. I've watched a lot of your shows. Yeah, so, so Lance Lan says, says we two, don't just give the rabbit hole, we give the whole rabbit. So that's why we have the rabbit roasted. That's the whole rabbit. The whole rabbit is being roasted in between the two the two pillars over the three underneath. But we are the people that go down the rabbit hole. But we are the people that go down the rabbit hole, so we are classed as the rabbit. So no, why are we getting roasted? No, well, no, no, mate. No, no, no. We, we, we go down the rabbit hole and we extract the rabbit. We, we consume the rabbit here every week on the show. I talk about this all the time. We get a whole rabbit from the bottom of the rabbit hole because down there you can't see fuck all. It's dark. Bring it back to the studio, open it up, dissect it. And, and get it and on eat, the table. And eat the whole rabbit. This, this is the rabbit being toasted under the rays of Ra. I'm telling you exactly what these symbols mean now. All of this has been designed by myself and the team for a very specific reason. Same as the sun. We use the sun. The same as the dark occultists Look, use here, the sun. You can see the rabbit getting roasted underneath the rays of Ra. Yeah? That rabbit is a metaphor for the knowledge at the bottom of the rabbit hole that we've extracted and we've put up in the sun for everyone to see. This is what this shit means. This, we're using what the Freemasons use. In that, in the one that first used by the Japanese. What, the sun? Yeah, the kamikaze time. Uh, well, the they sun. used they used it they used it in World War II. I think it was probably used by the Roman Empire. The same as Hitler's used the swastika, but it's not Hitler's yeah. symbol. It's not. Yeah, there's you know these symbols are ancient. But well, this goes back well, the to swastika, the swastika was actually changed when Hitler used it. Yeah, he, of course it was. Yeah, yeah. It. but it's this, you know it's basically the same design, just tweaked a bit, isn't it? But it's all, turned round. But there's so, turned the other way. on every single continent from every it's single inverted. Con- That's why Hitler used it. He inverted the peace sign. Okay. So in every single continent, in every single culture that has ever been, the sun is being used in some kind of symbolism. Okay? Mm. Again, it's not inherently evil. There's nothing inherently evil about it. It symbolizes Even Christianity the light. Christianity is sun worship. That's why Christ is, is all about on the on the solar uh, solstice. Yeah, Christ, Christianity <laughs> is the, the solar cult of the ancient world. Islam is the lunar cult of the ancient well, world. And Judaism and is the... Moon worship is, the, moon worship is well, You've got to let us finish, man. If we're going to have a conversation, civilised, okay, we've got to let us finish, dude. So okay. you've got the solar cult of the ancient world, which is Christianity. Islam is the lunar cult of the ancient world. And Judaism True. is the ancient cult of the celestial bodies. That's why their symbols are star. That's why Islam symbols a moon. And Christianity symbols a cross, symbolises the sun going across the zodiac. So that's it. Like they, again, none of this is inherently evil. It's just being used in some evil ways, and we're taking it back and using it in a positive way. We are de occultists. That means we're taking occult knowledge when we're exposing it and de occulting it. We're showing it to everyone. I don't what know was if once you, hidden is now shown. I don't know if you want to jump in here, Master Lee, if you're available. Um, no, I'm quite happy to, to <laughs> everybody to air their views. Um, Master yeah. Lee's just listening. Mark's got a question. 
So yeah, what was that? That's not enough listening. Okay. Do you know when you said the price for the right treat was £66 and you had 200 tickets? Yep. You're selling them at £66, yeah? Yeah. You sell all them tickets, you would make £13,320. And if you add all them up, it completes the number nine. Was that on purpose? No. No, no that wasn't on purpose. No, no. no we chose you, 66 You've actually just th- brought that to our attention. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, I didn't know we did that as well. Quality. No. Um, no, obviously 33 and 66 and all of the numbers were chosen on purpose, but I hadn't extracted it down to that level, no. No. No, that was th- thanks for pointing that out, though. Yeah, we didn't know that. No, that's an added bonus. Is, okay. there, a- is there anything else you want to address, Mark? That you're- Yeah, I want to address, like, you talk about health and talk about the Britney Spears and not to take it. Yeah. And... You are kind of like, even though you're not, you're not, you're not saying you're being a leader, but you do have people that follow you every single Friday. So you, you are kind of like a, not a leader because I don't look to you, but you're an influencer. Influencer, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't like that term. But I, I guess think we are you should set an example. So I used to smoke weed. I don't smoke weed no more. I used to smoke it a lot since I've stopped a few years now. I've just improved so much in memory and everything that I do, in everything. I won't even go into that. And I think that you should be promoting us to stop that. I know most of your listeners probably do like a good joint in the night time. I'm sure most but, of them don't. I think maybe some, some of our listeners might. But, but Mark, I would say, listen, I don't promote, not only I don't that, promote it. I, I, not I only that, let, let, you let, are, you, not only that, I've, I know this might sound a bit stupid for some of your listeners, but I go really deep into this stuff. So drinking Coca-Cola, I've seen you do that on your show. It's like promote yeah. and Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No so, problem. so Mark, you're I'll all just, about I'll just... health and promoting these these. Um, Listen, I'm not all roots. about. I'm not all about health, Mark. I've just said. So why are you I'm, promoting it? I've hang just, on a second. Hang on a second. Hold on, hold on. I, 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 I use it. I take a health supplement called Zero In. That, mm-hmm. that, that, that promotes um, cognitive ability and um, focus. And that's was it. that not? Was that stolen? Was that a stolen pattern? Hang on, we're, we're, hang on. Let's just address one thing at a time. We'll, we'll go on to that in a minute. Okay. So, I mean, Mark, none of us, yeah, I smoke a blunt from time to time. If you actually notice, right, when I started doing a show with Lance, what, I used to smoke about 12 blunts in, in a five, six hour show, didn't I? I normally smoke one now for the whole show. So, I mean, I I'm not perfect. Per- none none of us, hang on, just think. let me finish. Let me finish, my man. Sorry, I'm just so, saying, I think it's a bit out of sync. I didn't know who was speaking. Then. Is it you, Andy? Oh, yes, mate. Yeah, yeah. So, Basically, okay. none, none of us are claiming to be perfect individuals. That when, oh, when, definitely not. No, no. So, like, it, I, if I want to have a blunt, I mean, that's that's me. This is my meat seat. I can do what I want with it. Same as if, you know, m- some of my family members go out and get the Britney Spears. That's that's their meat suit. Obviously, I've tried to warn them about it. Is that the same as you're trying to warn me about smoking green now and that you think that after you've stopped, it's beneficial for you, which is cool. And I respect your opinion. But at the end of the day, we're not promoting... 100% healthy lifestyle. We don't, no. you know, like Lance is a takeaway from I'm, time to time. Yeah. It's like him drinking gin and tonic. Like, we're, we're not, we're, we don't claim to be perfect, mate, at all. Like, we're not. I, no, I like, do you know what I promote? Choice. I promote free choice. I promote it. If people want to, if people want to smoke and drink, that's absolutely fine. I've got no problem with that. So, so that's, you know about the dangers, you know about the dangers of the Coca Cola and Red Bull, though. You know about the sweeteners, do you? you understand I know about the dangers of driving the car as well. And crossing the road. I know about the dangers of drinking coffee. I know about all the dangers of everything. I'm a snowboarder. Like I, I, in the winter time, I go and hit massive jumps in the snow parts. I used to live in Austria for four years, right? And I, I you know, that's seriously. That's, that's not. That's not a car for them, Jenny. No, no. But what I'm saying is, it's very dangerous. <laughs> same as crossing the road. Same as flying in the plane. The plane could crash. It's you know, it's it's everyone's meat suit is to do what they. Yeah, think. but I you're think doing what a dangerous is, Mark, thing in a safe manner. I think what it is, Mark. The problem is, you, you're looking to me to be some sort of like example to you but i'm not i'm not here to do that mark i don't actually owe anything to anyone all i'm doing here is presenting a show on youtube you know we put on an event and i got to meet all of my my friends and my family that i've met through 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 doing this show okay but, can I, we get I'm, not a messiah char- I'm not a messiah character for anyone mark and any, i'm, I'm sorry well. if i'm disappointing you so can we get back to this uh ra treat is yes, this going to turn into a festival and, and what would be the problem if it did because I believe that you want to set up this raw treat to turn it into a festival because you even mentioned that you've been looking into other festivals when then, and then when you were speaking about it with Oma Beats when you was promoting it and then Oma Beats actually coughed when you said it and you touched your face 
and got a bit nervous. I studied psychology, so I understood that. Okay, so let me tell you, I'm going to. T- I'm looking to turn it into a festival that could cater for like thirty thousand people. What's your problem? Thirty three. Thirty three thousand okay. people. Yeah, I'll do a festival with a capacity of thirty three thousand people. Okay. What's, so what's really, because then I just think that your hidden agenda has always been that to create an audience of people that are genuinely interested in something else and then capture their capture their their uh, imagination and capture them and then turn it into a money making spin. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Let Let, let me ask you, because you, you've clearly done my research on me. Um, because one of your other um, criticisms, of, criticisms of me is that I still work in, the, in what you say is the media or the mainstream media, and you say I'm a bit of a traitor for doing that. You've, yeah. you've obviously researched me and you know the kind of level of stuff I do and, and what the kind of earning potential yeah. of what that is. Do you realise how much money I lose by doing this show every Friday night, how much money I could be earning out emceeing every single Friday night by doing this? <laughs> have, you, have you considered that? Have you considered that the, the, the idea that I would be doing this for financial gain compared to the things that I have been doing for the last 10 years and I've actually put on the back burner? You've obviously done your research on me, mate. You know about me, yeah? So you know what, my, uh, what, you know what I'm about and what I get up to. Do you really think that I would be doing this to make money? Yes. You know why? Because sometimes you have to lose to gain. Okay. Just out of interest. Yeah, go on, Marcel, go on. Yeah, yeah, just out of interest, because this is quite an interesting topic, like occupation, how to make money. Um, Because it's quite difficult to make money outside of the system. Um, In fact, can anybody tell me anybody, does anybody know anybody who makes money outside the system? And if so, can they let me know how to do it? We're not talking about making money outside the system. We're talking about people's agendas. And the reason why they started this, nothing to do with making money outside the system. Well, I mean, yeah, I can, I, I can see where you're coming from. I can, no, I, can see, I can see, I can see your point of view. Sorry, I can see your point of view, and um, I often think about these things for myself. I make money out of the out of the security industry, as an example. I also make money out of coaching people. Um, I know you do. Uh, so that's 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 how I how I make my money. Now, personally. How many subscriptions does Rise Above have? I think it's three and a half thousand, is it? Four and a half thousand? Six point seven. Six point seven. Yeah, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that's not that many. Um, I would have thought if the agenda was to do that, you would have a hundred thousand. Well, he's told me exactly what his agenda is. He's told me that he wants to get 30 to 33,000 people every year coming to a festival. So if he had to work hard on us and lose a few Fridays of MC, which is probably tops a thousand pounds you get paid for. So what is that? 52,000 pounds a year he'd lose to gain 66 times 33,000 every one, two, three days, on a two, three days a year, for two, three days a year. It'd be worth it. I mean, we when we started the show. Yeah, but it's not. It's, like, sorry, it's no, not no, two or on, three days. It's is it really two or three days a year? I mean, if you put a ten pound an hour um, uh, ratio on on the, on the hours that would take to do an event, especially of that scale. Well, do you know if you had thirty three thousand? Sorry for cutting you off, but you know if you had thirty three thousand people, you charge them ten pound. That's three hundred and thirty grand. So times that by six point six. Millions of really it, 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 opinion of me if you think that I would like like to, to make like some. I think that's like not my opinion. Plan. That is what you've just told me. That is your fact. You just said I am trying to get thirty three thousand people every year no, coming I to was, a festival. I, I, I thought you realised I was just sort of like facetiously <laughs> saying yeah. that to give you like a word. No, nah, that's inversion too. That's inversion. That's what people do when hey, they. Guys, when you heard it here first. Inversion. I just revealed my plan. I'm going to make a festival for thirty three thousand people. So, so <laughs> Mark, when, when we started, <laughs> oh, loads of jobs, mate. I'll be employing loads of people. When I'll be one of the, lo- the show, leading local employers, mate. When we started the show, there was no talk about festival or anything like that. It was only once we, we only did it because people begged for it. Yeah, that was a lot of work. Like, people wanted us to take it off the screen so people could meet each other and stuff like that. So we did it. And, and I don't think we, we can. Hang on, that. so let me finish. Let me finish, Mark. So we, we were only allowed. What was it? Four hundred ninety-nine people in yeah. the, in the area. Like, oh, if we were going to do this, like. Do you know what I mean? And make more, loads more money and stuff. We've had a bigger venue, had a bigger license, had more people and stuff like that. But we didn't. We wanted to keep it small and intimate. 
Mate, any more people so, would have was, killed me We in only started weeks. talking about this. Like like Lance said, we had three months to put it together. Because Oma Beach was like, nah, we, we need to do it in September. Let's do it in September. That was three months before, man. So you think this has been like, hang on, so let me finish, way. dude. Let me finish. So like, if, if you think this is some grand plan that we come up with before we started the show, and that was always the idea, mate, you're just wrong. Sorry, dude. Mate, mate, I'll just let you know, before I... Before I started this show, you were aware that I was already working at like raves and festivals every week. If I wanted to put on events, I could have already put on events for 30,000 people if I Oma wanted Beach to invest used to that put money. on massive you know, free parties could, and I, stuff I, like we that. We were doing that kind of stuff anyway. Like that was our job. You know, I understand that, that, but you did, you know, when you did talk about this raw treat, you did say after you, you said you were only, only thinking about it for three months. So then why did you say that you couldn't do it the year before because of COVID? Why did we say what? that? Because like, yeah. because the year before there was actually restrictions on events in twenty. Yeah, but why would you say that you did you only fought this event three months prior to the event when you actually said on record you've recorded say you recorded saying this that oh we've got this 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 retreat happening and uh, now it's happening because we couldn't do it last year because of COVID. Oh yeah, well we we talked about doing one last year as well, and then the idea went. But you just said to me a minute ago that you that you only thought of it three months prior. Yeah, to do it to do it to do it that year to do it that year to pull the trigger on it. You mean people? Yeah, to pull the trigger on it. People have been asking us to put on events since we started the show. If you've been, you, you know, you've been watching the show every week, you would know that that people in the comments every week would be saying, "When is this rise above um, meet up? When is this retreat? When is this mini festival going to happen?" People have been begging us to do it. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't force that on everyone, Mark. Mate, I've never put an event on in my life. Fuck me yeah. up, a tree surgeon, man. I don't, I, I've, I've never been involved with events or anything like that at all. I'm a. That's how I met Lance. He's the DJ drummer bass like back you know 10 15 years ago yeah it's me and Omer that have the re- that have the background in that and like Magix is a DJ and producer and stuff we're all like artists in our own way and then obviously that's why we wanted to put on the kind of event we did where there's music that's why we play music on the show and it's you know if we were going to put on events like it would have happened years and years ago if you think that we literally started the show to make a festival... Yeah, we're getting some complaints that this is going nowhere. Mark, can you raise your next gripe, please? Because like people are getting a bit bored with this. Um, you've got... You've got, got a, well, the bored of this sort of circular questioning in, about the event that most of the people came to and had a great time. If you just look at the comment section, people are saying, can people let me know when this guy's gone? I don't need your comments because there's a lot of... Uh, insults that going on in your okay, comments and right. a lot of arrogance so you, you've also I'll just read some of the things that you've accused me of Mark you, you've accused me of okay. being related to Rupert Murdoch because my surname is Murdoch okay so that's on the list you told you, I asked you, you I didn't accuse okay asked. right yeah well it was a bit of a loaded question ah, yeah. wasn't it am I related to Rupert Murdoch no not yeah. to my knowledge no I've, I've traced my family back 600 years in Paul on one side and my other half of the family is from Newcastle and it's a Gaelic name is Murdoch so um, I'm not. I don't have any Jewish or Ashkenazi heritage, as far as I know. Um, so yeah, listen. Uh, the other thing you came up with was that um, Santa right, Muerte. Sorry, Santa Muerte. Yeah. That was it. Yes, I want to bring up right now. Yeah, the Saint of Death, the Grim Reaper. We live in a duality, Mark, and to, and I believe. And, and many of us believe here at Rise Above that to embrace this duality, we move from the light and the dark, the yin and the yang. Death is part of our natural cycle, Mark. So when I visited the Santa Muerte shop, it was out of intention. It was out of curiosity. I intentionally went there to go and see what Santa Muerte was about, to buy some trinkets because I wanted to go there and to learn about it. I have no reason to think it's satanic or anything dangerous. So please don't think I was putting myself in any danger. Don't you don't need to you don't need to worry about that. I knew exactly what I was doing when I went to the Saturn Do you, do you know what many schools in their shops do with all them trinkets and that? Do you know what they actually do? Please tell me. You know why they want you to buy them? So you can pull, put negative energy inside you, inside your home, satanic energy, transferable energy. As soon as you touch them. Okay. Okay. So that's your take on that. That's your take. Might not be everyone's. It's not just my take. All right, but that's what. That's what about if you put um, just, out of, just out of just out of interest? Muscling. Yeah, just out of interest. I I was born. I was brought up in a Christian family. Um, I always remember seeing uh, a crucified Jesus Christ on a cross. To me, that there, there's no difference. It's, it's a it's a death. It's a death of of a Christ. You could call it a death cult. Some people do. I think it's a death cult. But but at the end of the day, at the end of the day. Um, 
I don't know. Lance, are you a Christian? No. Fuck no. No. This is the pro- The other problem, Mark. What it is, you're p- holding us up to your Christian values and none of us are Christians. So, I mean, I would even go far to say if someone holds sort of quite... I have a strong- relationship with the Father. Okay. Whatever, That's what I do. Whatever that means, right, from my point of view, you're viewing us through quite a strong Christian lens. So this, this stuff of like worrying about me getting Santa Muerte trinket or worrying about my music having a satanic frequency in, you know, I've heard all this before. Um, and- well, your music does. Some of your lyrics are okay, but a lot of it is is the devil tone. It is jaggy. I've like, yeah, tried yeah, this. I, I'm a, I rap myself. I made it like that. And, and, and I would never use that frequency. Not. When I am, you say that you're not, you, you told me before that you're not about um, love and light. You no, don't preach love and light. So what are you about then? Um, if, if I was in Star Wars, I would be a grey Jedi. I use the force and the dark side. You said that to me before, but yeah. that's, a, that's a really bad analogy. Okay, but... well, let, well, listen, well, let me put it this way. I'm, I'm about the light and the dark in equal measures, Mark. So that means you go and do dark stuff and light stuff. It means so that, that it means that I use the affirming force and the denying force, and I act as the reconciling force to balance those two forces. Anyone what do you use the denying force for? For friction and for personal growth, and for recatalization. Nobody grows. Do you believe no, growth? No, no, nobody grows in the comfort zone. Wait, wait, wait. Look, 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 look. You, I mean, you got to look. You got to kind of zoom out a bit. And if I was brought up a Christian, I was taught that Jesus. Um, descended into hell oh, he had to Christian sort out a few things it, yeah. and he came back um that is pretty much all all traditions they spend time studying or knowing the enemy or fighting the enemy i mean how can you actually fight an enemy that you don't know i mean surely that should be the first thing um like with myself Intel. I've, I've studied the dark occult world and even now i'm doing interviews with dark occultists why so i can actually get the information and and data and stuff to the techniques and the machinations how and you know, how, they, how they're doing it to us. How do you know these darker cultists are just not lying to you? Well, that's up to Mark well, Lee to use his own discernment, isn't it? I yeah, don't know he wasn't to, lying to you, Mark. You have to apply yeah. discernment. I mean, look, you have to apply discernment in everything we do. I mean, how do I know that the King James Bible isn't lying to me? That's true, but I don't follow all the Bible. Like I said, I have a relationship with the Father. You call him the one or the oneness. It doesn't matter what I call it. The absolute. Wants to call the creator, the creator, the underlying intelligence, the the universe, the, you know, whatever. It, everyone calls it something different. And if, the fact is, everyone's free to believe what they what they want. We we welcome all belief systems at this table: Christians, Hindus, mu- uh, Muslims, Jews. We even had thelemite. We had someone that was a thelemite in the comment section last week, and we welcome them as well. They actually were a thelemite. You know how much abuse. I get off your pe- pe- off the people in your comments to say I'm a Christian. Do you know how much abuse? There are loads of Christians in the comment section. We have Christians. You know how much abuse I get? I think you it's know, because like, you're, they think you're trolling, Mark. That's why they're giving you abuse. But I'm not. I'm not trolling. That's one thing. I'm not. Okay. I was compelled compelled to come back here. Okay. I'm not trolling. I'm not word nerd like you thought. All right. All right. Can I ask you a question as well? Why did... You, is it too personal to reveal why word nerd were kicked off? No, Listen, we, we I'm not address gonna, that. I'm not going to air a load of uh, dirty laundry about an individual online, but I'll just say that for 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 work for things that happened and transpired for, and for personal reasons, we to, we chose to, to sever our connection with word nerd for the integrity of the group, and that's all I'm going to say. I don't need to go into any more detail and to air dirty laundry of other people online. No, because that's not cool, man. Okay. No. I mean, yesterday on the Telegram group, Mark, you called me a new age pagan. <laughs> I apologize. No, that's that's no, that's cool. If that's your opinion, but could you could you speak could you speak a little bit to that? Why you think I'm a new age pagan? Do you know, because I told I you yesterday, I put a picture. Up. I'll get the I'll get the camera up here. I've got I've some weapon symbols tattooed on the side of my head here. What does that symbol mean to you? It's called a witch's knot. Okay. And it's got the trail at the back going behind my ear. Okay, it's called a witch's knot. And what that is, if you study Wicca, so that protects me from dark witchcraft and binds the caster for life with their own negative energy, which they tried to put out on me. So that's a positive Wiccan symbol. Again, I told you yesterday in the Telegram group, there's two sides to every culture, to every practice. 
okay, there's a dark and a light. And I've chosen to use a light symbol on the side of my head for my own protection because that's my belief and it's my right to do so. Doesn't mean I'm a, some sort of dark ritual pagan who th thinks they need to let blood to the earth to make the sun rise. That's not what I do. Let me ask a question, Mark. Since the, I've sort of like spoke to you now directly, which I always think is best, and I've had a chance to divulge why, you know, the numbers, the symbols, the dates, are you... Are you, have you changed your mind? Have you moved? Or do you still think I'm misleading people? Because <clears throat> I've tried to be 100% honest. I've tried to be totally honest. With I'm you. not convinced. Can I just ask him, is that a Celtic sign on the sign of it? Is it Celtic? No, it's Wiccan. It's actually Nordic. Wiccan. It's actually Nordic. Let's, okay. cross, let's cross over with, with Celtic and Nordic symbol, symbols. Yeah, it's, it's, an anci it's an ancient symbol. Used primarily by Wiccan followers. Is Celtic older than Nordic? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head, my man. I have to have a look. Could bet you we could be talking about the same thing. <clears throat> but it's irrelevant anyway, because the intention behind it for me is a positive symbol. I'm not using it for any dark rituals or anything like that. So okay. you, you call me a New Age pagan. I mean, I, I, I worship nature, yeah, because what, I, I, what I is love a new age nature. Pagan? Yeah, I don't know. I don't actually know what a new age pagan is. Because, uh, again, there's listeners explain. in the show which actively know that I speak out all the time and how much bullshit I think people, the new age movement is. A, a new age pagan is those people that dress up at Glastonbury like wizards and stuff. Is that them? No, but in the context that Mark said it in, what, what did Mark mean? So, like, uh, bringing the old beliefs through into new age. So, the old paganism of the, like, the Yule and the Sat Sat uh, Saturnalia. Worship. Saturn worship. Saturnalia, Saturnalia worship, okay, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Pagan, pagan holiday around, what is it, 20? Yeah, it's around Christmas, isn't it? The 19th, I think it's to the 19th, to the 5th, 19th of December to the 5th of, or 3rd of January, I think. Yeah, the winter solstice pagan. Yeah. Sorry, pagan I thought you said Sat Saturn worship. Yeah, well, it was Saturnalia, yeah. Um, yeah, Saturnalia, that's it, yeah. Yeah, well, isn't that what Christmas got morphed into? Well... People, I think the Christians took took it so they could they spread out the, further. The tree. They took the Roman, they took the Roman uh, paganism so they could spread out further, so they could blend in. Yeah, it's all pagan, isn't it? It's a but again, again, like somebody, what's classed as a pagan, someone that worships nature, doesn't mean all pagans blood let to the earth and do child sacrifices and stuff like that. No, people true. can just Some be, people... you know, appreciative that the sun fucking rises in the, every day, so that the crops can grow, so they can eat. Like our guest earlier on, she actually described herself as as from a line of witches, which she she said it are wise women of the earth. Yeah, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's negative. It's like a pagan priestess. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I mean, again, it's not negative. There's nothing negative. Same as the symbolism we use. Same as you know, all of it. It's, there's nothing negative about it. It's the intent behind it and how we use it. Sheep Farm says, "Listening to this is like being in another dimension." <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, have I mean, I hope we've sort of answered some of your questions. We've gone through quite a few of the accusations which you were reading off on Telegram in the last couple of days because, you know, I could my thumbs were, you know. Melting after. I, look, after I a looked while. at my time with 359 messages. Yes, yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, there was one other person um, who was upset that I told that I told someone to f off when they'd given me jip um, after Mexico. I mean, you're only human. Yeah, yeah we're not I perfect. Mean, <laughs> listen, if someone, if I feel like someone's acting no, up online, you, that's not fair to say that because, you're, like I said, you should lead by example. And that you know, you example I said, if, if I think someone gets above their station and they're being and they're mouthing off at me, same as in real life. I would well, instantly today, put them in their place unless they put me in, their, in my place. That's the, that's, that's the way I operate. I'm not going to make any apologies for that. The person in question had also... Well, shall I tell you what someone wrote to you one time, yeah? Someone wrote, if you want to know why you still have the same number of viewers you did a year ago, it's because you can't manage to stick to one night a week. It's a shame you were too busy to build the channel. Yeah. And you replied... We are more than happy with the amount of views. We usually broadcast cast Fridays, sometimes Wednesday, Wednesdays too. How many times a week do you broadcast? Yeah. Now that's arrogance. Why won't Why won't you constructively answer his question and well, try I, get I, him I, back I, on board as a listener? So what? Sorry, what, I missed the question. Basically, what, was the what, question? what someone had said is they said the reason you guys have the same amount of views as you do last year is because you fail to maintain regular broadcasts. I mean, we have a break like once every four, maybe six weeks. The fact is, the fact is, um, Mark, it's, it's really down to this. We don't owe anybody anything. We don't owe anyone anything. This this show's free. Yeah, it's totally optional for people to we watch. We give you our time. Sorry, 
Oh, we wait, give you a hard time. You give you know, hard time. Right, okay. Think, you, that, that's your choice, people man. Have... So, you, are you upset because, because I've let you down because we're not broadcasting enough for you? No, not at all. I'm upset the way you spoke to one of your listeners. That was that was an aquarium. Okay, I, I, well, I mean, some statement. some people are upset about Eminem's lyrics and you know stuff like that. But again, it's it's down to taste. Well, Rise above isn't, Rise above isn't for everyone. Yeah, here it is. What is I think I think what it is, uh, Mark. There's a, the, the people that put com um, criticism in comment section that isn't constructive criticism. Like this is why you have the same views amount of views as last year. It's like for one, you're loading the question, assuming that we're just. Well, doing you're this. just bringing yourself down to that guy's level. If that's how you feel, then. I'm sorry for disappointing why don't you. Why, why do you, you put, rise why, above? Why do you put me on such a pedestal? I'm not Jesus Christ, bro. Why? You know, no, 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 no. <laughs> but, but, but why don't you? Well, you're a very clever man. I'll give you that. You are a very clever man. You know, you, you're very clever. Okay, thank you. I mean, listen, I mean, here's the thing. If, if I feel like someone is not giving constructive criticism, the reason we do customer services, by the way, is every single month we ask people to call in and give us some constructive criticism. You are actually the first person, and hats off to you, who has taken the time, who's got a genuine gripe. Or yeah, gripes. fair play. No, no, we have no, no, fair, yeah, fair play, play, mate. You're the first person. No, thank ever you done for it. the time, you know. Thank you for, for allowing me to do mate, this. No, it's I, cool. I, I it's it's honestly concern. cool. We might not have agreed. It might have got heated at times, but I said that I would have this conversation with you, and this is why I don't like to do it in comments. You can't express yourself properly. And we yeah, can't you can't see the face you're expressing. You, could, you know, it's it, it's good that you called in because, like I like said, yeah. we haven't had a negative person call in, but we've had plenty of negative messages and comments and stuff like that. But yeah. no one ha actually and has I the balls say, to come in and call in the show. Let's have a conversation about it. I want to explain things properly. If you ask me, why do you do this? Why are you doing that? I want to explain it properly. So, Mark, I will thank you for calling in. Unless you've got a last burning point which you want to bring up. Yeah, I do. I want to know why you are mobilizing us. Mobilizing because you, have got, yes, you should be mobilizing us. You should be. You should be using your audience, and you should be giving them exact ideas, exactly what to do. Right. So here, right, the, here's we get into the crux of it, Mark. This is you've just said the problem. You want me no, to tell I, you what to I'm do, really, Mark? I, this is some. This yeah, is someone else's comment. It's not my, it's not my job reading. to tell you how to do. You're, you're asking me. This is somebody me. else's comment. I'm just reading. Right, okay. Yeah, well, I think, look, I think, well, I think you have to factor to happen, in. It, it's supposed to be, like, my, micro-organisations around the communities and close to where people like you are being and bringing people together, smaller little micro-communities, and then the micro-communities end up joining on a larger scale eventually in the future. We're already doing that. That's what we've been doing this year. We've already got those micro Partly what Raw Treat was for. We've got Raw Treat. We've got the Nowhere Brothers going up and down the country, meeting people. We've got Terror and that, you know, we've getting people to We've got JD go Gorilla farm. going around teaching people how to grow crops and stuff like that and setting up people's farms. You just need to get involved, Mark. We're we've got doing Clara, it, one of my long-term friends in the chat, who I've known for years and years. She goes around to these um, like gated communities and stays, in, in, you know, where people are homeschooling their kids and, and doing stuff like that. It's... Uh, I made a decision in 2021 when I got acquitted from doing that speech that you saw, the Serco speech. When I beat them in court, I had a conversation with Master Lee, and he'll remember this. And, and, and I said, what should, I'm not going to go, I don't want to go back to standing on a bench, talking down to people, telling them what to do. What I want mm. to do is to show them how to be, right? And what did I say? When the Soviet Union gives you lemons, don't just create lemonade, make a fucking bespoke lemonade. We've created an entire media station. We now have an event where we are teaching kids how to have survival skills in the woods. We are now self-forage. We are now self-sustaining yeah. ourselves by selling merchandise that people genuinely like. And it's actually got our symbols out there and it's getting the message out there to people. People are scanning QR codes and going to the website and watching the shows. We're actually creating Maybe a whole I've been community. too busy and I've been away for too long and missed a lot of you need, yeah, I think you have, Mark. And I, I, that's it. I just think you've been out of the loop, maybe, and you've actually missed what we've been trying to do off the screen. We've been trying to I take. I tell you it off what really put me physical. off one time. What yes. really put me off when I got there and I seen you in some Soviet Union. Um, right. Generals out. Well, I mean, when, when, when we Where first started. This... No, go on. Sorry, I didn't mean to bite you in that. Go on, Mark. Doesn't no, like the right. generals got... outfit. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool. But what, if you remember, you said you start. You you were watching us right from the start. We used to wear. Like the Russian style hats, didn't we? Right at the start of the show. When we first did the Soviet Union. Yeah. Uh, in in the show. intro to the show, when we're getting ready and I'm sitting down, like we've, we've got these silly hats on. That was the whole point of it. And then like, <laughs> who was it? It was it Joe. It bought and... for me as a, as a present yeah. at my wedding because people were calling me the general. After doing the Serco speech and I used to dress in green and that, people give me the nickname of the general. So someone bought that uniform. It was Omer Beats and, if, and their friend Joe. They got all the different Soviet things from collectors. 
And that's, you know, it's, that's it's, a, it's it a comedy <laughs> skit, mate. It's like people, well, I guess you don't find it funny, but a lot of people find it quite funny. Like I, I turned up at Raw Treat, started reading out some ridiculous rule sheet just as the general, you know, people having photos with him. It's like, it's, it's comedy, mate. I'm try, we're trying to take the edge off things here. Okay. Not, yeah, but I understand that. I, I, I'm fully with you. Sometimes you have to, you know, not be so serious. But this thing that's coming is serious, Lance. Yeah, sure. We are already moving towards CDCs, yeah? We're already there. The Bank of England have already accepted it. All they have to do is build the infrastructure and crash, crash the economy. That's why we're trying Mark. to build a black market. Mark, we try, we've, we've, we've got our little communities now and we're trying to trade with each other. Everyone's got their little outfits, whether it's selling, you know, onks or they're, or they're doing, um, like, you know, merchandise or whatever, selling clothes. Uh, Mark Devlin putting his books out. Sorry for putting you off, sorry. Well, it, it, means, it means that when people next want to buy a tracksuit or a T-shirt or something to wear, rather than investing in a parasite company, they can invest in Bad Slave or Truth Be Told or Rise Above. This is the idea. Can I can I ask six questions? Go on. But is that, is, is, what's the what's the what what's the material that you use? What cotton? What's the what? Organic material. Organic in... cotton. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it actually, oh, actually, it's actually it's t-shirt. It's even vegan, mate. This is a vegan organic <laughs> cotton t-shirt. Okay. Right, yeah, seriously, can, I, can I ask everybody six questions? Right, yeah, go, go on, Marcelli. Yeah. Shoot, shoot. Right. Okay. So, question number one: Do you agree with Britney Spears? No. Yes or no? No, no, no. Okay. Do you... I know people uh, have died from it. Right. Let's just keep this yes or no. Do you want digital implants? No. No, no. Mark do of the you, Beast. No, do, you want, that. Do, do you want the new world order? No, no. No. Okay, so that's the first three. I know what you're doing with this. Right, sorry. The second, the second, oh, hold on. Oh, no, sorry, let sorry, me just I want, I want the light new world order, not the dark new world order. That's what I want. Right, yes, so, no, yes, no. Another three questions. You can't have a light new world order. Wait, the let, new world right, order let, is let, let me finish, control. let me finish. Another three questions, right? Very simple questions. Is there a creator? Yes. 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 Okay. Is there a hell? Yes. I think in some in some ways, yes. We could be there already. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, is is Land there... Is, last question. Uh, last question. Is there evil? Yes. 100%. Yeah. Right, okay. Six things we all agree upon. <laughs> I know you. Why, right. why, is, why is there no focus on... Uh, and, and what you have to remember, there's millions, billions of people coming out of being programmed, being told what to do, uh, through um, education, religion, dogma, uh, politics, social engineering, so on and so forth. So it's hardly surprising that people are going to be um, looking for answers, looking for somebody to tell them what to do. Now, this is where there's going to be a shortfall, because if you're going to go from control into some type of freedom, there has to be the individual responsibility to make a decision for themselves and to accept other people's freedom. I did try to highlight this uh, months ago about what does freedom really mean? Well, if you really want freedom, it means that you have to be free to allow people to do what they feel is correct for them. Now, how are we gonna I join see. the two together? So we're coming out of one world and entering into a, a free world. How are the two gonna, how, how, is, how is that gonna take place? we have to find some kind of uh, unification, some kind of unity, surely. So why is it such a heavy focus on the division? So for instance, I consider myself a polymath and I was always a polymath at school. So when the teachers would line up 10 things, 10 objects and say, um, tell me the difference, straight away I'd see 10 things that was the same. But that, that was drummed out of me because they don't want you to see similarities. It's all about division. You have to, you have to identify target pinpoint the differences and that's why we're in the mess mm -hmm. because it's all about division so so we're under control because our minds have been programmed to look for uh, to find the patterns of differentiation and difference not unity we have far more in common and i mean everybody in the chat um in the studio mark we have far more in common than we do differences now What's taking place right now, which is good, because we're bringing things out, we, we, we're shedding some light on, on various things. But if we're going to have some kind of uh, infight in division, who are you working for? Freedom or control? <clears throat> That's a very good point, Marcelli. 
not not just Mourinho. This is why I love Leeds. This is why I've always admired the guy. He's very he's very smart. Voice of reason, mate. Yes, he is. So I think and when I, I first think... heard that trivium and quadrivium from him, blew me away. So look, I think the point is that the fundamental six important things is something that we all still agree on. Mark, I think you might have got a misconception that I've been like maybe taking people down a dead end where they don't do anything. But the whole concept of Rise Above that, you know, we've sort of evolved with is that directly fighting what's going on is probably exactly what they want and has already been catered for. The way that we're going to truly rise above this is to continue living our lives while making ourselves mentally, physically, spiritually and communitively strong enough to ride through what is going to happen. You know, and all we can That's do... correct. I agree 100%. Though. Yeah, all we can do is prepare for it. So, you know, the event that we had was a learning event. We were teaching kids, you know, survival skills. We were teaching people self-defence. You know, we had music. We had a bar there as well. And a lot of people got to meet each other. It was a social event as well. Um, Everyone we, had a good time. We also had a market with, with, traded, with people trading their goods that they were handmade. You know, so we're trying to create this black market or racket this community um, we had we, we had a dating with a wellness center we yeah. had derek the dude who's built his own cb radio he's talking to people in fucking south america oh, and so he, he was teaching people, people about, about when the system goes down how to actually build a cb radio out of things that you find in your garage and shit like that mate i wish you'd come to raw treat because i think like a lot of your concerns would have probably been answered if you'd seen like some of the stuff that was going on there because it was a real learning experience mate and you know, I know, I know we, had, we had jack from forage for knowledge teaching people yeah. he had huge like when he went out and did a forage and we had huge groups of people going with him and he was teaching people how to you know, forage for themselves and live off the land. It, like, you know, if worst case comes to it, then at least people can can eat some stuff. So, I mean, it was a, an educational party, I guess. Yeah. Wasn't it? All types of things going on. And, mate, we're going to have it one earlier next year. And I'd really like you to come along and, you know, to see for yourself just what we've been doing and, you know, how we are trying to build. And, you know, we don't want to, like I said many times, we don't want to be just about doing a, a live stream every Friday night. Yeah, that's important so we can connect with people. But we also, we're about building as well. So I hope we've sort of like, you know, tended to some of your concerns, Mark, mate. Yeah, you have, guys. You have. This but is just one thing I want important, to say. Bro. I want to say, yeah, well, you know, if someone's concerned or questioning you, you should not be rude and abrupt to them and tell them to fuck off. Because you just talked about uniting and that is just dividing. And right. you might, you might, that one person you took to fuck off. Let me say something. Might, might, that, might all that stuff going stone. on in Telegram might not have helped my mood before I read that comment on YouTube yesterday. Yeah, so um, I might have. I will admit I might have been a little bit highly strung. Again, nobody's that perfect. Comment. Yeah, but listen, no one's perfect, mate. Um, so listen, it's good to talk, Mark, and I want to thank you for calling in. And I just finished though. Yeah, 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 I was on. saying that one person might be the cornerstone. You remove the cornerstone. They may have been the cornerstone, but they may have not. But we'll never yeah. know. Okay. That's true. Right. Or that one person might that on go board. to the I'll other side and try to take you down. I will take. I will take. I will take that on board, Mark. And th and thank you. Why, who's Mark. calling me Mark of the Beast? <laughs> 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 well, come on, that's true, funny. Yeah. That is funny. That is. I'll tell one person that that's funny. That, that anti you. <laughs> yeah, she's hilarious, mate. She's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Yes. Again, mate, you've missed uh, if like if you haven't tuned in for six months or so, you've missed some anti COVID hey, memes. Don't, don't which are I've got some new I've got very some busy. meme. I've got some memes coming in, uh, coming up um, immediately. I've lost people in my life. I've been actually. So, Mark, Mark that, will mate. you do? Will you do us a favour here at Rise Above? Will you do us a favour and go back and watch? You know, in your own time, whatever, and watch a few of our shows, like that you've missed out on, maybe from where you left off, and and you know, maybe tune in on on a live stream from time to time these days and, and see what we're about and you know again call in the customers next customer services and see yeah the phone lines are open at once a month sorry repeat that again it went, it went uh, I, just said, I just said at the end the phone lines are open once a month mate so you're always welcome to call in at customer services yeah I will do once a month. <laughs> yeah, roughly once, once a month. A week. <laughs> nah, we can't do it once a week. We've got other guests and stuff. But mate, mate, thank you for calling in. I have got some other stuff to get down to. Um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for calling in, Mark. It means a lot because it's important to talk, bro. So rise above, yeah. Yeah, rise above. Take care, mate. Rise above. There we go. Listen, I think that I, I'm pleased with that outcome. Yeah, I don't, I don't want disgruntled um, family members, right? So here's some good news. 
Do you remember I told everyone about that that swindle, shyster medic company, Night Safe Medical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, to, that gave us um, a quote for Rise Above. I paid ahead of time. Then five days, uh, sorry, Ratri, then five, six days before, they tried to triple the price to something totally out of our budget and totally ludicrous. Then I said, no, that's stupid. They said, okay, we'll come. Cancelled the day before and then didn't refund us. Now, big thank you to some of the Rise Above family who helped give uh, Jamie Page, Jamie Reese Page, <laughs> Jamie Reese Page of uh, Night Safe, because he's all his details are online. I'm not doxing anyone. They gave him some pressure online. They uh, were going into his personal photos, screenshotting them, stuff, loads of weird stuff. Rise Above <laughs> family were doing. Thank you very much for that. Anyway, I ended up finding a CCJ against him, which cost seventy pounds. Um, lo and behold, the system works sometimes. And uh, this is something you spoke about, Lee. Sometimes we actually need to be appreciative of the infrastructure around us, right? Hey, Lance, you got you 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 were up for a ten thousand pound fine from the Soviet Union, and what was it that your lawyer had to read the small print which well, was put there we by the to, system? We raised thirty three hundred pounds through crowdfunding. Thank you very much to all the family, um, and we and we paid for that barrister. They read all the small print of the Soviet Act, which was put there by the Soviet Union. Yeah, it was their own small print <laughs> that they hadn't read themselves. So we had to pay someone all that money to read through all the small print, and then they made this document which got me off. Um, and then I gave it to Alf. Do you know, I put it online. Do you know how many other people now have used that? Fucking thousands. There have been loads of people, <laughs> including other Bournemouth cases. So big up Mike and everyone that was arrested on that coach by the Soviet Union. They arrested all those people just for going to London. The old people as well. They used our document, our Rise Above document, nice. to help their case. So big shout to them. Anyway, the fact is, I paid 70 quid to oldgov.co.uk and um, filed a CCJ against them. And lo and behold... Yeah, they had to pay that as well. So we got the money back. It's back in the Rise Above account, which means we've got a little bit more to play with when we put down our deposits and get the next event or the next project underway. So that's very, very good indeed. Yeah, good news. <laughs> it, do, it does work. And I'm, I'm obviously going to report this guy to Plastic pa Paramedics R Us because I don't think he was a real paramedic. I think they were um, joking around. Right. The other week, Lee said the clown show is about to get super interesting and I can definitely feel the heat being turned up again. A lot of 33 signalling going on. Um, yeah, the bank, the bank of England, the biggest interest hike in, interest hike in 33 years to 3%. What a fucking surprise. What a fucking surprise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One thing I will say, though, my parents said that when they were, when I was little, when I was a baby, and they had their first mortgage, do you know how high the interest rates were then? Go on. 14%. 14%. Wow. So that means like, obviously, if you've got money in the bank, you're laughing. But if you've got a mortgage, you're, you're not. So, hey, I'm not, I'm not sticking up for the bank, but 3%, you know, that was only in the early 80s. 14% interest rates. So, um, yeah, plenty of threes. <laughs> Lee... Did you send this one to me on the left about the uh, the Royal Mail? Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, that, that was sent to us from uh, somebody in the dojo. Yeah, I got sent to it um, by was it Badria? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She sent it to me as well. Um, Thirty-three Royal Mail Royal Mail employees are attacked by dogs every week, and we got. Well, I'm not surprised that they probably think there are other dogs wearing muzzles. Yeah. Look I at know, the amount but... of fucking muzzles that's being worn there. <laughs> Come on, right, and, and now. So, yeah, there's a nice little 33 there. Now, uh, uh, please tell me, everyone, if I'm being stupid and stretching here and just being a Luciferian, right? South Korean declares... The, I mean, if this really happened, and as described, it's terrible because lots of people died, and we're certainly not laughing at that. But what I'm laughing at is if I'm right, 153... So one and five is a six, and then three, six. So you've got a six, six, six there straight away. We've got Lucia. <laughs> now, <laughs> again, people will think I'm crazy. They usually do. But we've looked at these names that get injected into news stories in the media. Often they are the name of the reporter or the writer or the newsreader. And they seem to have like a comedy name or a dark comedy name that is linked to what's going on. So Lucia, that's Lucia. Same as the address for the... Uh what we showed earlier exactly the exactly address the for the Tavistock uh, Child uh, Bell End Chopping Institute <laughs> is called like Bell Size Close <laughs> Lucia Binding now do you did remember you when the, did you see it oh sorry Karen. no 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 please go on um, did you see the BBC uh, news report when they changed it at the last minute with the, yeah with, you showed it to the story yeah uh, Terrace Slim shared it and um, when I it said one thing when you clicked on it something else appeared so they, no, they changed the story. 
if I'm the, right, I'm thinking the first story was it wasn't crush, it was a cardiac. Yeah. Yeah, now I don't know what the numbers are for how many cardiac incidents in this, but it's higher than Travis Scott. I think in Travis Scott it was eleven cardiac. Right. <laughs> so eight deaths. Oh, we should laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, please, everyone, we're, not, we're laughing at the numbers, not the deaths. Um, eight deaths, so it's a Saturn thing, and it was eleven. Now I don't know how many cardiac instances there in this exactly, but I've got a feeling it was around twenty. But yeah, it seems it, it seems very similar to the, the Travis Scott event for me because apparently the surging or the crushing was caused by there being a street party with 100,000 people there and some famous Instagram or YouTubers went down an alleyway and someone goes, there they went and loads of people went down to see these famous YouTubers or, or Instagrammers crushed. and got crushed apparently. But I've seen a video where like 20 people are all getting um, like, you know, their chest pumped on the floor. Lucia binding, a light binding crush. Maybe I'm reaching. Am I reaching, Master Lee? No. <laughs> Simple, no. no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's have some dark occult memes. This is funnily enough not by one of our crew, but I've got to give it some airtime. Look at this beast. Yeah, this is fucking awesome when I've seen this. Demons. <laughs> Bezos. <laughs> Demons walk among us. Billionaires aren't people. Starring Jeff Bezos with Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, featuring, oh, look, it even says there, Netflix star Bill Gates. Oh, yeah, in Bill Gates well. yeah, so it's got. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, that's Hellraiser from the 80s. Is it 80s? Yeah, from the 80s. Yeah, yeah it's good at the good old days. Pinhead. I, I watched one of the Hellraiser films recently, and I, it, I never really realised that the bad guys, or Pinhead and his cohorts in Hellraiser, they're actually interdimensional, sadomasochistic gimp demons. Wow. Heard yeah. it here first, guys. Have you seen it, Master Lee? Uh, have you watched ago. it recently? Well, no, what? years ago, but I can't remember it now. No. If you get a chance to watch it again, it's very strange. I can't remember what they're called in, in Hellraiser, these, these demons. But they are all sadomasochistic yeah. gimps. I find it very interesting. They've got like hooks and shit in them. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they, like, yeah, they like yeah. do it to themselves as well, and they're yeah. getting off on it, and they've got like little like orgasm things coming out of their throat as well. They're seeing people get chopped up and shit. Very. You it's saw like, that video. You saw that video I did with um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That short yeah. Clip. Yeah. Yeah. Quite quite interesting, wasn't it? It certainly was. And, and just to recap for anyone that hasn't seen it, they they're sort of like these two sort of like adepts of some ancient futuristic religion and they're in front of this supercomputer and that supercomputer what's it called deep thought deep thought yeah. cenobites rachel mccaskill thank you that's what they're called cenobites well done rachel mccaskill thank you very much 10, ten schwab points yeah um and uh they sort of consult it and they, they're saying you know we've you've been here for seven billion years what is the ultimate question the final question that answers all the great questions in the universe what is it and what's the answer master Lee? um you have to ask the computer that's going to be created in the future, which is Earth. Oh right, so the question, the question that on that on oh, the answer. In, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. The the answer. Um, yeah. So what what is the, what is the answer? The answer is Earth. Earth is this is is a computer of the future. Because that computer said, Deep Thought said that it will. Um, it can't give the answer, but it will create a computer that can give the answer. What's the 42 about then? Uh, level 42. Um, it's a computer coding. So for those people that are into computers or coding, um, number 42 is important. Okay. Isn't it like a space or an asterisk? So it actually means nothing. I'm not sure. But maybe somebody in the comments who's a computer geek can... But that's where level 42 got the name from, by the way. Mm. Yeah, because 42 always comes up. Yeah, it's a very interesting... 42, uh, 42 is 6. I was literally just about to say, yeah, 4 and 2 is 6, yeah. So the answer is 33. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Broadcasting so it, across the entire crater realm. Perfect. Hashtag Vag Life. So you can check that out on, in the Guardian's channel. Um, it, that was a video you dropped the other day. It's a really sort of uncanny little clip. Okay, here's a good one. <laughs> 
We've been talking about Satan. This was all over social media, this was. All Jesus over. Christ. Now, I, now, people were going, oh my God, look, look what he's wearing. And I put something like, these fucking normie truthers. <laughs> the world, one of the world's leading Satanists wears a Baphomet costume. Dude, this wants to, this on dude wants to stick a chip on your head. Surprise and shock. <laughs> but what, what, like, imagine my surprise that he's dressed as Baphomet. Apparently, this, this outfit costs like seven and a half hours. Getting out of a Tesla, which their symbol is the fucking horns, the goat horns. I mean, I mean, look, it's not surprising. If you if you partake in Halloween, everyone dresses in something satanic. He's loaded. If I was loaded and I partake in stuff like this, that's, that's a dope outfit. It's a great outfit, it's mate. Fair play, a mask. If you are into that kind of stuff and you think it's like, and you like it and you like dressing up and you like uh, and you don't mind partaking in something that might potentially be a bit uh, inverted and hijacked, hey, I think it's a dope outfit, and it's not surprising. Fucking uh, Enki Musk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I shared it, and then my my share of it got twenty two comments and three shares. Three two two skull and bones, right down. And we're on three. Two, we were on three two two. Oh, shut <laughs> no up, shit. Andy, just stop it, mate. Stop it. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, here's some good ones. Oh yeah, is <laughs> I'm Alan Partridge. It's twenty five years old. Isn't it about time we finally set Steve Coogan's alter ego die? No. Some of my more normis, normalistic friends on Facebook posted this, and they were Alan Partridge fans, as I used to be. And um, they're like, oh, I hate these kind of articles. They're so negative. And I just went bang into the comment section, like, I guarantee this is because he, this character it will never survive after the resurrection of Savile into Coogan's meat suit. And they're like, oh, what? What are you talking about? And I was like, look, look. I was like, do you think... And they, they were going, oh, look, I'm not questioning whether playing Savile is going to be a good or not for his career. It blatantly won't be. And I was like, well, why do you think they would have, he would have taken it then? It's either being punished or in the ladders that he's it's in. It's a great honour. This is the highest, yeah. the highest accolades. Yeah. Like, <laughs> to play Grandmaster Jin. whoa, not many people have got a meat suit that's capable. I bet Elon Musk would like to do that. Right, now, here's where it gets juicy. When I, I reposted, the com- not the, the conversation, but I reposted the sentiment of what I'd said in my own post. And I basically said, like, this is setting the scene for the resurrection of Master Ginny into this meat suit or something like that. And I had one of my contacts and it come into my personal messenger. And this contact is my high-level professional sports and entertainment contact. Okay. And it's also someone that might have been involved with like w- what the footballers do to avoid um, comments of dieters, you know? Right, You know yeah. what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone that's given me good information about premiership footballers and when I was talking about comments of dieters. And he goes, I know the person that wrote Steve Coogan's autobiography. He's like, he is dark. He is dark. He's into some that, weird shit. That stuff, like bad stuff, involving people you shouldn't be doing f- things with. And and he said, and he's highly protected. There's a, the the press have a gagging order on him. And I was like, what, like Cliff Richard? And he's like, yeah, probably, yeah. And then he's playing Grandmaster Ginny. Yeah. And uh, why are we not surprised? Yeah, no, no, I'm not surprised, <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm swaying towards the. Uh, more of the this, decision this, that it's a great honour to play. This one of my play. contacts is a very good contact, and uh, that's why I don't normally really speak about them. But this uh, this is a very very good information, and they're, and they're, and they're they're the type of person that's not a truther. They're not conspiracy theorist, but they watch m- my stuff because they know me through sports. Um, yeah, so and I know it's good information. They don't chat shit. They said, "Yeah, you you don't want to know how dark Steve Coogan is." I said, "I, I think I already know." Sorry. What was what was hidden in his drawer? Yeah, what yeah, was, what was that? Partridge's drawer. I mean that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Like to have that as part of the, his um Yeah, that he constantly character. had some sort of awful taboo in his drawer that he would dive across the room. I remember I remember in one episode when Lynn or someone opened the drawer, he said those was, were already in there. Those, so it's mo- it's more than one thing. He said those well, were already in there. I remember Lynn looking in the drawer once and laughing like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a little yeah. schoolgirl and then him getting really embarrassed. So in, rather than it being something sinister, it's something really pathetic and embarrassing. I think it's those leather fucking pants that he wears when yeah, he's I, like... I think it's those vulcanised rubber pants. Yeah, vul- yeah vulcanised rubber. <laughs> they don't perish. They don't perish. 
Uh, <laughs> so what else have we got here? Um, someone, someone's, in the, someone's in our group earlier early this week. Oh, they're talking about sausage fingers on Radio 1. That's right. We did this. We, this is Rise Above. We made that happen. King Charles's massive sausage fingers explained by Dr. Right, now his name's Dana McAlpine. Does anyone know who Lord McAlpine was? No, 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 go on. He's that like famous paedophile that was on the list. No, of Philip, Sco- go. <laughs> Philip Schofield. He was mates with Jimmy Savile, um, and he was on the famous list that uh, Philip Schofield was going to drop, and then Lord McAlpine died. He was right up there with Ted Heath and all those ones, apparently. Well, it's only appropriate. That and they then have. look, just believe where it says Dana McAlpine. Look how many comments there are. <laughs> <laughs> 33 <laughs> comments and 30 likes. 333 three again. See, I'm not making this up and I'm not choosing things. I mean, obviously, I would have chose this even if it didn't have 33 in it because it's got sausage fingers. We've got the 222 underneath it by the Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's the uh, computer uh, 42, I guess. Which, it, obviously, yeah. 222 again is 6. Divide that by 2, you've got 33. <laughs> and I think, um, I think this is Al Gore. I think this is, Al Gore's been listening to our jokes and is now, is now re-manifesting them and copying our jokes. It's the only way. It's the only way it could be happening. The universe is spoken into existence, after all. I think we. I think it's only right we talk about this. Oh yeah, we've got one that's coming live as well. Well, we've got over three hundred people tuned in from all across the crater realm. Excellent. Yeah, this is rise above. Look at our beautiful studio. Right, let's talk about Matt Hancock, Matt Dazalam. <laughs> 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 I got a bit of jip because from a couple of people because I posted on Facebook. I can't believe people are complaining that Matt Dazalam is going to have to be in a in a shit environment. He's going we're going to see him eat bugs. Um, you know, I don't think it's going to be enjoyable. I think it's like some sort of embarrassment. Why ritual. the fuck is he going into the jungle on that celebrity shit? What like why? How much has this dude got on his back? Does he need? It's he's part not, of the it's clan like show. Washed up celebrities going. It's there. an yeah, suggestion, think, isn't it? Like why the fuck does this yeah. dude need to go in there? Maybe, we're well, looking at it this way, right? If the dark occultists and their various tentacles of power and operation go right through the media and We've got the sex entertainment bots in industry, the chat. Uh, Sam Carney, keep the deal with that, please. Sex bots. Right. If, if they go right through the media, then why wouldn't the dark occultist can particularly control this show where there are literally live broadcasted humiliation rituals? Mm. Think about it. If you are into humili- humiliation rituals and you're trying to get people to eat bugs... Yeah. You would definitely have hands all over a show like this. He's going to come back and do interviews and stuff like that, and they're going to ask him about, oh, what was it like eating the bugs? And like, do you know what? It wasn't bad, actually. It was quite terrible. I guarantee it. <laughs> what was it like eating that like that smoothie made of pig's testicles and rotten fish? Yeah, it was okay. That was great. We'll all be, drink- we'll all be eating that and drinking that soon. So, can, you, um, can you imagine the comments section? On the mainstream media. <laughs> Every comment section is going to be turned off. I heard uh, I heard that Melinda Messenger might be in there as well, and she's actually a trufer. She's like the old, the model glamour TV glamour yeah, and TV presenter. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. a she's a holistic healer now. Is she? Yeah, the Empress went on um, oh, a, a you know weekend would, with her. Do you know what I would love to see? I would love to see because they would like sit around a fire and then shit like that in the evening, and fucking feeling sorry for themselves. I would love to see. Some obviously it won't happen because it's you know, some kind of controlled bullshit. But um, I would love to see someone actually say to Matt Hancock around the fire when he's at his lowest point, like, "Why did you kill all those people?" Yeah, <laughs> or something along those lines. Like, what, what's with the genocide, Matt? Yeah, what's, what's with the genocide, Matt? Talk some people about, yeah, about talk, Madazalam. Talk us, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we've got some epic memes here. Now the one on the left, this is actually from Cold War Steve. He sounds like he should be a member of Surprise Above. Cold Absolutely. Steve. He, he is a high-level memetician. This guy is like right up there. He gets hundreds of thousands of shares. Um, is he Harold Shipman? Exactly? Yeah, so it's Matt Hancock <laughs> getting in the jungle to meet one of his um, apprentices, Harold Shipman. Um, and there's loads of grannies in there surrounded by venomous snakes. On the right, I believe this is made by the Messerschmitt. Um, I'm a celebrity get me out of here starring Matt Hancock but he's actually in sort of some like high supermax prison he's had both his eyes beaten in um, he's probably been bummed quite heavily as well against his will so we can only enjoy wish it. enjoyed every moment yeah he enjoyed every moment he just wishes he could see <laughs> right uh, we've got more we've got more um, this is the work of the Auntie C the Coviet one so, yeah, who else have we got in there? We've got Harold Shipman, Joseph Fritzel, Jerry McCann. Um, is that, oh shit, is that Fred West? Yes, yes. yes. Fred West, Rosemary West. Uh, oh, uh, it's, uh, I think, Kate McCann as well. Kate McCann. That's the Yorkshire Ripper. 
uh, Rolf Harris and Bill Cosby. Who's this person here to the I'm right? Not sure. Can someone identify this serial killer to just to the right <laughs> of Matt Hancock, please? <laughs> so this is I'm a serial killer. Get out, get me out of here. Or I'm so I'm a serial rapist, a therapist. <laughs> uh, Auntie Covey style, yeah. Um, another another masterpiece. Yeah. Med- Medazzle Lab sponsors. <laughs> I'm a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you to the count of five to apologize to me publicly for calling me stupid. Absolutely spectacular. This is really good work. Oh, we, we should change the graphic. Ola has left us. We've got um, some that have been sent in live. Oh, please. We've got a... Uh, go, go to the face, go to your Facebook. Facebook. There we go, look. Oh, wow. This is another jungle meme. This is from um, Rise and Shine. I've just pulled this one across. This has been sent in. This has been used before, hasn't it? With um, Terra Slim chasing uh, Ed Sheeran off the farm, barbecuing his owl. <laughs> Terra Slim is always chasing somebody away <laughs> with a pitchfork. So Matt, Matt Dazzleham... Mate, he tur- his- Terra Slim turned up at 10 Downer Street with a fucking <laughs> shotgun and blew the fuck out of <laughs> Boris. <laughs> Big up Terra, Victoria, um, Yeti, and all the Bad Slave crew. Um, yeah, we like this one. Is this Rise? Yeah, it's Rise and Shine. Yeah. Rise and Shine. Okay. Excellent work from Rise and Shine there. Like that. That was per. So, um, right, I need to talk about these memes. We've all seen that these. Uh, this oh, hat. shit. We should have showed that when we were talking about Grandmaster Ginny. Shit. You'll just get that up from right. the email. Yeah. Who, who is this from? I don't, uh, some dude. I don't actually know. Oh, he's from Johnny Fogg? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has he made memes before? Is he I, some, I is don't know. I think this. Might, I mean, if, if this, this is his first one, he's straight in. At, listen, like... comrade. If this is a virgin meme, <laughs> I don't. We need to zoom in on this. So, so I don't know what to say. I think the comment with this is: this is the uh, the new upgraded studio that Lance has spent with the Luciferian. This is on. fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Fogg, if this is your first meme, this is sterling work. <laughs> He's got the Queef Master Pro in there and everything. <laughs> Jim fixed it for me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> let me uh, let me just get back to where we were. Yeah. So. Oh, Johnny Fogg's in the chat. Oh yeah. He's in the chat. Big shout to Johnny Fogg. Excellent entry into the meme verse, mate. Welcome. Lee, you've you must have seen these memes with the uh, the Halloween costume, the various different designs. Yeah. Yeah, they've been floating so, around a bit. Yeah, there's been literally hundreds of them for taking the piss out of everyone. Um, so obviously, I threw a few together that are, that are you know appropriate to our cause. These are the serial killer and psychopathic killer ones. We've got Fauci and Health Chancellor Gates. Uh-huh. Now you can dress like one of the most prolific mass murderers in human history, Petri dish included. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, these ones are not too bad as well. Um, a non-compliant person. The pack includes a brain, a spine, a symbolic pair of bollocks, and a Britney injury person that's a, an elephant with a Pfizer costume. <laughs> <laughs> these are all pretty good, but these are not rise above memes. Let's see what the rise above. These crew are farmed. These are farmed. We got these. Um, you know, I'm just a, 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 a humble meme farmer. I got these from the Gretaverse. This is what the rise above crew came up with. On the left, this is from MH memes, Mahims, as I call him. Um, he died of Divic 91 body bag kit. <laughs> Injury resistant zip. Comes in sizes 3 times 5 times 33 XL. Gimp masks sold separately. Wear to a Britney Spears concert. Yeah, you save your time. You wear the um, body bag on the way to the Britney Spears concert. It says at the bottom here that obvious stab wound, temporary tattoo included. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween NPC. Comes with defibrillator, private health insurance, will writing kit, and flag storage. Oh my god, the flag storage, <laughs> that's the best bit. That kills it. That's Rise and Shine. That's Rise and Shine's work. Yeah. Okay. Um, does everyone remember when we had John O'Looney on the show? Makes one of our best guests, I think, when he was Groundbreaking. Yeah. Again, another person that carried on being consistently with what he said. Get, starts getting killed, called a shield by everyone. Um, apparently a Freemason and stuff. I thought John O'Looney is legit. But anyway, he hasn't gone away, right? John O'Looney is still going and he's still finding out new stuff. Does everyone know about Stephen Crowder? He's like a big, one of the biggest alternative YouTube, not alternative, because he's sort of like conservative right wing American. He's actually a very good broadcaster, even if I don't agree with him, but he's got like, millions of subscribers. He had John O'Looney on, right? 
Now, Stephen Crowder's worth about three million. He's big. He's sponsored by Smith and Wesson. Wow. All like a big gun manufacturer. Yeah. Right. So he's like pro. One of these pro. I would say out of those crowds, he's probably the best uh, broadcaster. I recognise this dude. Very skilled broadcaster. I actually look up to him the way that he hosts the show. I think he's very talented, Stephen Crowder. Um, but anyway, he has a big, big platform. John O'Leary has been on there, and I've listened to it. Whoa! I mean, I'm not going to lie. He put the video out on Rumble and Bitshoot only. He said, "I can't right. put this video out on YouTube." Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now, Lee, you've seen the, these pictures of these calamari squid-type parasite entities that have been allegedly pulled out of people's bloodstreams or mm. veins, right? Yeah. Like, what's what size are they? What scale is that? Big. They're like they're like. I don't know. I, I don't think these are small things. Basically, John O'Looney is obviously keep going on about these pictures. These are being pulled out of people's veins when they can't embalm people properly because their veins are filled with these. Fuck, man. Yeah, that's like real bad. Because apparently this is what John O'Looney says. A real blood clot, even in a dead body, is like a spongy little blancmange. If you pick it up, it breaks down, even when it's sort of semi-dry. These things are fibrous entities. They're like the roots of a the plant. nanotech. The roots of a plant or something like that. The point I'm getting at is... John O'Looney's going on about it, presenting this information to people. He's getting called a nutcase. Before he has him on the show, Stephen Crowder phones around on camera dozens of um, undertakers in America. Most of them say, no, don't know what you talk about. A couple said, what, can't talk about that. Put the phone down. Wow. And then one guy started talking about it. And he's like, yeah, man. He's like, I'm getting people. I can't open them up. I can't open their veins. Um, and I've pulled things out that I don't recognise. And then, you know, and they played it on live and he'll come back. And then John Looney comes on and then starts talking about it. Um, the story is not going away. And it's like... One that, uh, don't forget, like, how long it's been since the first Britney Spears tour. Some like, this shit's had some time to grow. And that, yeah, they keep going back for more. Um, what about the guy that, like, queued up and got, like, ten boosters? Some people will have blatantly had more than five. You know they've done it. Yeah. The real staunch co like Proviers, they would have probably got six or seven by now. Um, <laughs> this is fucked up, the, uh, man, honestly. Hum homunculus. That's what yeah. 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 Yeah, that was part of your big presentation just before Ratri. Um, You were talking about the homunculus within, the inner homunculus. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. I watched this um, this new Netflix thing, and I know people have a go at me for watching Netflix, but I like to see what the the, the darker cult is putting out. And it's called, it's basically like um, you know a different si a different episode every week, like um, the Twilight Zone, something a cult and dark, yeah. but a different story every week. It's called Curious Box of Mysteries, or yeah, very dark. One of them is about this parasite that is has no senses. It's sort of like this jellyfish squid thing. And it lives inside humans and it's done for thousands of years and controls them. And it's never been found. And it gets inside people. Oh, my God. Wow. And it is, it's got everything in there. How synchromistic. And, and obviously this parasite gets in someone and it speaks through them. And this guy that works as a, as a it's called um, the autopsy. And he starts cutting these bodies open that were dug out of this mine. And this power and, the, and oh my god, I won't ruin it for everyone. But oh. I mean, this shit looks like something out of the movie Aliens. The burst out of people's chest. Holy shit! I've just remembered. Right, this is how synchronistic the clan realm is getting to me. While I was looking into this story and I was getting scre these screenshots on Facebook, I came across a video on Lord uh, Health Chancellor Gates's own channel, right, where he visited the Parasite Museum. My God. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, let me just find it, yeah? All right, I have this video because I downloaded it. Where is it? There it is. So, let me just get it up here. So, I'll just put these, I'll put these images back on the screen. So, these are allegedly parasitic entities that have been pulled out of people that have been to the Britney Spears concert's veins, yeah? These pictures are all over Facebook. Many people have seen them. As I'm researching this, this comes up. <laughs> Can we already see some? What stuff? the fuck? Man. Wait, wait, wait. I'm in the world's foremost parasite museum here in Tokyo. Hi. World's leading king of parasites. Why, is this what he does for a day out? Goes to a museum to like honor his subordinates. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's kind of cool. It's kind of gross. In history, there was a lot 
a parasitic infection in all countries. Fortunately, a lot of that's been eliminated, but it's great for people to come and learn about the burden that's there and the great work that's going on. I've just got to keep doing that to get rid of the, um, in case we get copyright. <laughs> That's what this dude does for fun. Yeah, he goes to see Recreation par parasites. More than yeah. 1 billion people in developing countries suffer from parasitic diseases, including guinea worm, sleeping sickness, elephantiasis, river blindness. These are the so-called neglected tropical diseases. There's a few, like guinea worm, that's down to very small numbers. We have others that we have very good tools with the drug companies to actually... You get the idea. But I just thought... That's yeah. gross, man, honestly. It, it was gross, but like, isn't it just synchronistic that, well, this, this emerging parasite story from Bill Gates' experiment is coming to light, that he's visiting the Parasite Museum. Yeah, kind of amazing, kind of gross. <laughs> Well, right. maybe they're going to try and flip, flip the narrative. Go on, Lee. Well, maybe they've they've caused this problem, and then they're going to pretend to come up with some solution to it. Well, that's what they do best. Yeah. Problem, reaction, solution. But I mean, yeah, these on these are fucking gross, man. That it's John O'Leary's talking imagine, about. I mean, look ima at this shit. Imagine if it came to light that this was happening to people, and it was openly admitted. And the first thing that they did was introduce an anti-calamari parasite Britney Spears. Anti-calamari. <laughs> anti-calamari Britney Spears concert. Everyone, we have a new... We've, we've, we've tweaked the, the mRNA technology to break down the calamari. Please. Well, that's the ultimate problem reaction solution, isn't it? They're going to double their money. Yeah. I mean, it's the, it's, it's the complete Satanist business model. Double their money, kill a load of people and then mock the rest of us that know about it. The I mean, triad. I mean, here's the thing. Like, um, you know, many people have parasites in their stomach. Everyone has um, an ecosystem of tiny parasitic, uh, you know, bacteria and um, aerophytic bacteria. In case anyone doesn't know, yeah, yeah. aerophyte is the opposite of a parasite. It works in synergy. So we all have an ecosystem inside us, but like, the, <laughs> these parasites... They don't seem to be, uh, well, they don't seem to be actively parasiting. They just seem to be clogging up people's arteries and killing them. Mm. Like, I'll just put it back on the screen again. Could be part of the experiment. Yeah, maybe maybe the people that haven't died have got, uh, you know, their parasites are in, in act and they're literally just controlling are these, them. Are they, I wonder if these things are conscious. Like, you know, fucking, you know, alive and shit. Calamari has breached the consciousness barrier. Or is this the nanotech, the self-assembling no, nanotech? That'd be the second phase, won't it? Once it's formed, then the uh, the spirit or the consciousness can enter the matter. Enter the matter. So is this is this the self assembling nanotech? I just don't know. No, I don't know. Like it, there must be somebody who knows like this shit. That's like why isn't this all over social media? Like people, like doctors. What, have you and not stuff seen this before? No, no. I mean, like people coming out and saying, right, this is this. Like we've st we've tested oh, this. Oh yeah. If you want to, if you want to, I mean, like what is it? What's what's it made of? I. Well, Matthew Horwood says there's a story coming later this week. I have seen that the, one of these new documentaries, uh, like, called like, um, I don't know, sudden died suddenly. We have three oh three people tuned in. Died it suddenly. Sorry, sorry, Carol. God, no, just saying there's one coming out in a, in a week or so that apparently goes deep into this phenomena and it tries to explain it. Bonnie uh, Greaterek says they are Hydra. Hydra, yeah, that's the... Do you remember the... It was, we memed it, didn't we, people? It was like a the little tentacle bug thing, like holding up holding up a sign. Yeah. Like that was the, the original one in 2020. So you think how big these things are growing? I'm inclined to think that um, any of these things that actually kind of manifest and survive, they'll be the new sort of political elite class. Wait a minute. Are you saying if if people manage to survive with these things inside them? No, the thing they... survives once it's killed the host. Right, okay. Of, wow. The, 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 the person drops down dead and then this thing kind of slithers out and stands up erect and puts a suit on and goes to um, Parliament. <laughs> 
<laughs> or maybe, or maybe they just they just slowly take over the meat suit and it never falls over and it's just that yeah, thing and it's, wa- it, it, walking around with, with a meat suit with this sleeve. thing in charge of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The meat suit just becomes a sleeve instead of having the spark of uh, of you know divine Michael inside you. You've got one of these calamari entities. I wish <laughs> oh I was joking. God. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing. That's why we laugh. I think Mark, I think that's maybe we could explain that to Mark a bit better. Some of the things we we laugh at is because of our, our, our respect and our praise for Ronald McDonald, you know. And that's the thing I have noticed. We haven't prayed to Ronald enough recently. We, haven't, no. we have yeah. not even mentioned his holy name. And for anyone that's new to the show that doesn't understand what I'm talking about when I say Ronald with a, uh, a W R. Um, Ronald McDonald is is the deity that you you pray to when you really hope that you're wrong. Um, and we haven't prayed to him recently. We just sort of laugh at everything. So yeah, we we don't want people to have calamari inside their veins. And to... I want to talk. I want to just get someone on the show. Should like we talk this? to John O'Neill? Yeah, let's again? get John O'Neill back, back on the show and should. talk about this shit. Yeah, because I want someone to like get one of these and cut it up and, and like put it under a microscope and say, "Is well, this?" Give, yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, give it another six months. You'd rather bring one of these parasites on and. Uh, <laughs> keep it in a cage at home in another six months there'll be a podcast like advocating for their rights oh god Parasite Lives Matter is there going to be a P going on to the LGBT <laughs> hey we've already got the Gimp Lives Matter t-shirt I can see Parasite Lives Matter coming soon can we seen... can we be wrong on this one please please just yeah, this uh, one hey, just this once can we be wrong oh that's a good meme that's some Johnny Fogg again Johnny Fogg is hard at work <laughs> So this is not a meme. I'll just point this out. This is not a meme. This picture here of like Health Chancellor That's Gates. That's why I saw this. Yeah. Health Chancellor Gates demonstrates how to read a book on a speedboat. Has anyone ever sat on a speedboat? Look at the wash there. Yeah. Right? That speedboat is probably doing 20, 30 knots. Have you ever tried to read a book on a speedboat, an open top speedboat going 20 or 30 knots? Yeah. Bullshit. Especially not a 70-year-old man without his glasses I'll on. I'll push him overboard. He's got his fucking Ukraine <laughs> body uh, protector on there. You really like... wouldn't want to share his calamari, would you, on his oh, boat? No, 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 not sharing his calamari. <laughs> look, right, look at his feet. Look how big his shoes are. Can you see that? Mm. Does that look long? I would say that's like a size 14. Covering his flipper. <laughs> well, mate, you need shoes like that if you're the king of clown world. Do you know what I mean? Look at the size of a massive clown shoe. Whenever I want a good laugh, I go back to that video. I think it was like back from the early 90s where three people assassinated him with pies, cream pies. That was good. That was good. He proper shit himself. Really, You could tell that. Yeah, I so say he can be got to. Yeah, you can he tell it was the stage. Got to. I, bet you can't get, I bet you couldn't get to him like that now. Not wow. now. Back then, he wasn't really health chancellor Gates like the Soviet Union. He was a fucking gimp, wasn't he? Yeah. The Soviet Union was just a twinkle in the milkman's eye back then. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Okay, where do we get to? Oh, we're getting we're getting on. Um, right, so Gre- Greta reset news. Here's two bits I've pe- I picked out of the Greta verse. Um, uh, the picture on the left, I believe, is Newcastle upon Tyne. Clean air charging. <laughs> <laughs> clean right. Si- let's break this down. City centre, clean air zone, charging starts thirtieth of January, twenty twenty three. So a charging period of a clean zone, air zone in a city centre, do you know what it means? No, going in that zone. That's it. Yeah, no We've vehicles the in the zone. Twenty twenty three so, and the thirtieth. That's two threes, two threes. Oh yeah, it's three tw- three two two and a thirty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boom! Oh, I didn't even see that. See? <sighs> it's a lot of it around, man. It's a lot of it about. It's, it's of it hard to get away from. To it's be contagious. Honest. Especially, it's in, contagious. Uh, well, uh, we have to say something. It's going to be a lot in 2023 when that number oh, is always God. there reversed all year. Um, so, yeah, this is UN Agenda 2030, not Raj Agenda 2030. This is UN Agenda 2030 in action, 17 sustainable goals. Let's start zoning off. Um, Incremental tiptoe steps. Was it Oxford or Cambridge that have got a new uh, plan to zone off the city and the surrounding areas into different zones and you won't you have to get a permit to go and travel to another zone it's like yeah it, like districts yeah like districts. hunger game shit I think how would they police that well if you have electric cars you wouldn't need to police it because the cars would do that wouldn't it but the cars wouldn't go there for, yeah, yeah yeah just yeah. stop the beep or you know you get a ticket or something well they just wouldn't they won't be programmed to drive there like you, you program in where you want to go and they says no you're like restricted yeah yeah, Greta Reset in action, comrades. On the what right, is it that um, is it the Black Mirror episode where 
they had to they started the car and you had to blow into a breathalyzer shit like that yeah like, yeah yeah yep. that's not far away nah. the black box and don't you, i said this a while ago right over in um all, all around bournemouth dorset pool area where we live there's um they've been doing the like extending the pavements haven't they and putting cycle lanes in absolutely fucking everywhere and i said months and months ago i was like this is like the prerequisite like to get the infrastructure sorted so before they ban cars yeah, like yeah, because it's just constantly making the road for the cars narrower and narrower. And and the, for the pavement, for the pedestrians and cyclists, like, bigger and bigger. Like, this is, it's here, it's coming, they're trying we to do to this shit. Drink, Nobody's it? asking for this shit. No, there's not that many cyclists and pedestrians that want this. Like, they, they've spent billions of fucking Schwab How many more credit. pedestrians are they expecting? Isn't there enough space on no, the pavement No, I don't even see already? anyone on these fucking things. Oh, <laughs> you bloody bastards. <laughs> It, what, what about you, Master Lee? Have you seen this? Like all up because you're a bit more north than us. Have you seen all these in towns and cities and stuff? They're extending all the pavements and cycle lanes. Um, yeah, I try to avoid town centres, city centres, to be honest. But um, I've seen a few. Yeah, I've seen enough. So then, this is the start of it, and, and obviously now they're saying clean air zone charging starts. Like, like I said, people are going to avoid physically driving in this area to save their money, and then they're going to go on their pedestrians or their gay little scooters. All of it. Yeah, we've got a comment here. Link well, there won't be many people by then, will there? Well, no, not if, not if these parasite things are growing in their uh, growing in their veins. Not for shit. But this is the fucking COVID union, after all. So you've got two hundred ninety-four people tuned in, guys. I won't go any further with the um, presentation until Lance gets back. <clears throat> so how's the dojo, Master Lee? I think. Um, was it the Wednesday night chat which actually triggered um, the the Telegram massacre that we had? I think I read a comment from um, someone in there that they said it was they had a problem with the chat that you and Lance had on the Wednesday night. Oh, the midweek. Yeah, yeah, the midweek chat. Sorry, not the dojo. Yeah, the midweek chat. The di where it is uh, go deep. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not really into the Telegram. No, I seen a comment oh, on there that said that's I'll what that was. Deleted the myself for it. from Telegram. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I haven't actually tuned into that. Yeah. No, I've kind of, I'm preempting that Telegram's going to be a kind of a bit of a cesspit, to be honest. Yeah. Especially yeah, for the yeah. so-called truth movement. Uh, Clara's asking, in the, is it a call-in show? Yeah, Clara, you can call in on Skype if you want to chat to us or whatever. Feel free. So how's the tattoo? Is it healed up? Oh yeah, it's all healed up. I'm actually getting some more symbols on the side of my head put on on Sunday. Big up to Kirsty, she does all my tattoos. I'm getting a pentagram up there, so that's gonna re <laughs> reaffirm my, go down my well. paganism <laughs> and some um, and some other symb symbolism as well. But maybe I'll. I'll Why are you getting a pentagram? Because I know the true meaning of the pentagram. Why not? Whatever. The pentagram, I'll do what I want. If the, t if the top, the pentagram, if if the if the top one's facing the top. And not not inverted. That's the spirit. It's going up rather than down. Why don't you get a counter rotational Solomon star? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. <laughs> Big shout out to Godvage. Has everyone seen the latest Godvage? Yeah, man. It's pretty up there. Where are we going? Here we go, Lance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not our work. But is that? Oh no, made by Jim Bob. I thought it was Bob Moran. So I, I just, but hey, there's no particular reason I've put these up. I just thought they were funny. So the one on the left says, when they say transhumanist, they don't mean turning you into Superman. They mean modifying you into a castrated gimp, which is incapable of rebellion. And there's sort of like a fat man boob, like beta male uh, porn hub watcher who eats fake meat in a room full of anime. <laughs> and then on the right... I really like this one because <laughs> this one actually sort of has a, a, a different message that you're actually just going to be turned into a computer before you're turning after you're turned into a trans person. Um, but nevertheless, I thought they were both humorous. So there, therefore, I shared them with you. <laughs> there's, there's nothing else to say about these two memes um, apart from that. Should we move on? Feel free to share your thoughts. Okay, um, I haven't talked about the Kanye West stuff because he's been on it recently no? <laughs> yeah i mean obviously you can't normally talk about what he's talking about um for obvious reasons but one thing i did find funny among all of the places he's getting banned and cancelled from 
is Bournemouth have confirmed they will no longer play the Kanye West song Power before their home games due to the American rapper's anti-Semitic comments. And then the right-hand side, this is a book that someone posted. <laughs> Jews by the seaside. <laughs> um, because Bournemouth is very famous for having lots of Jewish-owned hotels. And they've probably, most, they've, a lot of them have probably got boxes at the Cherries ground. So they can't be associated with Kanye West anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> Sorry, maybe you have to be from Bournemouth to find this funny, but it just seems so so weird. You know, I suppose we are in the Premier League now, not that I follow bread and circuses, but I always thought we were quite insignificant down there to have Kanye West song. Um, no. I don't even know we had a football team. <laughs> What's football? <laughs> um, here's an interesting subject and something that we probably have addressed quite a few times before. But now, what we have talked about before with regards to what happened in the last two years and how we're going to approach people that didn't do the right thing going forward. Um, should we forgive them? Should we never forgive, never forget? I lean towards that, towards, you know, for certain people. Um, but here's the thing. These things have started appearing now. Let's declare a pandemic amnesty. What's that? Mm. What does that mean? We need to forgive one another for what we did and what we said when we were in the dark about COVID. No, we fucking don't. <laughs> well, there you go. You've made yourself clear. Master Lee, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, it's a tricky subject, isn't it? I mean, I've kind of raised this point that this is this could actually be part of humanity's evolution, like the final test, that we actually do have to forgive them in some way. But I guess it's going to be case by case. And equally, is it for us to judge, even? Mm. I'm lucky enough, during the uh, COVID unions, Schwab, full Schwab being attack. I never had anyone close to me which which died from either the stabby jab or uh, or from Divock itself. Yeah, I, I and but people you try and forgive somebody whose husband or wife or son or daughter that died alone because they weren't allowed to be by their family in a hospital bed, you try and forgive that. No, I agree. Uh I mean, for me, I haven't lost anyone. Um some members of my apparent family that I don't talk to anymore. <laughs> But they Do you weren't. remember? I remember seeing videos, right, going around of the nurses, like compassionate nurses, like filling up their um, surgical gloves with warm water and placing it on a dying patient's hand so that it felt like someone else's hand was like holding a hand. How fucked up is that? Yeah, I mean, I would draw a line between people who just went along with things and did it to themselves. And they decide it was wrong and they want forgiveness. I would consider forg saying, yeah, I'll forgive you. It was your personal choice. But there is a difference for me personally, for those certain breed of people that went around acting like members yeah. of the actual Soviet Union, telling other people they couldn't see their family, grassing people up for seeing their family, people who were very keen to have others fired from jobs, etc., um, and people that worked for the Soviet Union. The knew, order followers. They knew what was going on, um, and they didn't speak out. For me, uh, no, no. They just wanted their paycheck. Fuck everyone else, take the money. But I think um, you're going to you're gonna have to factor in that quite possibly not everybody is actually fully human. So I think this will, at some point, give a massive revelation as to that there may possibly be sort of... Uh, non-human humans yeah think, think about it Th think of the mindset think think of the um or lack of mindset think of the uh psychopathy to actually to do what they do mm. and know what they're doing and still do it yeah i would love that what master lee said there to be addressed directly to medazzle and matt in the in the jungle exactly yeah. what you just said there lee mm. Yeah, I, I mean, what it say? It's been spoken of. I mean, you can actually trace this back to the whole Cain and Abel um, story narrative. That there is different types of humans with a different bloodline, and mm. some. Well, this is why, in a way, you can't assume just because you may have a certain mindset or um, level of empathy that others have the same. They obviously don't. It's very clear by now that that's the case surely yeah no I agree to do what they've done they can't be 
fully human. They certainly haven't got empathy, and that brings us then to secondary psychopathy and primary psychopathy. So yeah, I totally agree with what you just said. Well, it's sort of the question is that are we all the same? Does everyone have these human qualities of empathy? Is everyone a, a fully human? You know, we talk about people being NPCs on the show. Do we really mean that? Do we really mean that there are meat suits walking this earth, which that, are controlled by parasites, or that aren't that that are just meat suits being controlled by the Matrix and are not don't have the divine spark? Of consciousness that w w that we think in that animates us. Are we are we really uh, saying I that? Think it, it, I think it goes back to the Cain and Abel story narrative. Let's go into that. Well, you got two brothers that are not the same. One is human and one is not so human, <laughs> to be polite. And then they obviously. Um, I mean, I'm not saying this is kind of a fact, or I think it's more possibly as a, a simplified analogy that there's possibly different types of humans at least two i think more i think there's more than two well you could look at it if, i mean if you want to make it simple you could say that there are those of the denying force bloodline and those of the affirming force bloodline okay as a primary yeah. type yeah it, in, and then i would go into almost subsections of in law of one they're known as the children of ra or the sons of belial yeah two two distinct groups on this earth yeah. Now, I guess in the Bible, especially, well, not especially, in the Old Testament, you know, the Yahweh character would have referred to um, these as the unclean bloodlines, you know, mm. not not of my creation or something like this. Is it, Well, it, it's, it's genetic. It goes back to genetic modification, doesn't it? So right. there was a, a kind of genetic modification. I mean, this is all just um, hypothetical. Um, there's types of gen genetic modification that took place and it, it ended up with two different types or two main types um, and then it goes back to um, the uh, Atlantis that there was a war between those types and that they yeah. tried to eradicate the, the bloodline of Abel but some of Abel survived and you could actually say like if there is a 5% of people that don't buy into this bullshit and that are awake Maybe we are descendants of that bloodline, five percent. And the descendants of Cain are those who have a meat suit that seems to be more in line with going along with the parasite agenda, or whatever, and going against the natural, inherent, sovereign, sort of freedom-seeking nature. Control freaks. Yeah. yeah, people that want to control others. the opposite, the the antithesis of of you know what we're about, essentially. Well, do you remember? What, uh, I think it was last Wednesday on the midweek when I said about that the egregore of looking after another person. So, like, I can protect you, and you can protect me. That's the ultimate form of protection. Okay. Um, if you look at the story of Cain, uh, he answered when he was asked a question, and he said, "Am I my brother's keeper?" Okay. So basically what you're saying is like it's not my job to look after Abel. No. Which kind of means he's an enemy. The answer um, could have been or should have been of course I'm my brother's keeper. Now if you're talking about two opposing bloodlines which are actually potentially sort of related and they came from a genetic experiment could it be that you know, we talk, I know Ola talked about this earlier on, that these um, demigods, these Anuna or whatever, seem to be of two warring factions. Hmm. Could it be that one group was given the genetics of one of those groups and the other was given the genetics of the other? Because it seemed like the old Enki and Elil story was Enki was the one that wanted to give us knowledge and give us consciousness, while Elil wanted us to be controlled, yeah. um, automatons, slaves. Um, and I see that sort of mirrored in well, the dynamic that you've just described. Do you want my honest opinion? Yes. Always, always, Master Lee. All right, okay, so we understand the principle of polarity, duality. Okay, so there would have to be a polarity, a duality within humans for the evolution of humanity as a whole. Hmm. Why would there just be one type? And I don't mean race or culture, I just mean like a genetic type. One that is uh, denying, and one is that is affirming. 
one that wants to look after another and one that doesn't care that would actually kill another mm. for the sake of self so you've got almost two different uh, tra trajectories or two different aims one would naturally want to look after another person even for their own survival in some kind of um, stretched out um, s selfishness but it includes another person the care of somebody else and then you've got the other type that really doesn't care I mean I know people right and I've had conversations with uh, I can call them friends um, because I've got a kind of mixed bag of friends I've had conversations and I've said to them if it meant that you could maintain your life as it is with your nice house car business but the whole of Africa and Russia had to be obliterated would you agree to that and they say yeah of course I would without any hesitation You'll probably be right, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I, that, I, I, think, I think that mindset is more common, or, 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 or be it that it's covert, I think it's more common than we realise. Oh, mate, no, no, I see that mindset all the time when I, well, when I used to sort of still confront normies about their decision or the implications of the Britney Spears concert. And, you know, I say, well, what about, what about all these people that are having side effects? What about the young people's um, myocardial function rates that are through the roof? And he goes, "Well, yeah, we didn't all know about that." And, you know, we, and, and this person I'm speaking to is—he is, he had a nice boat. He, wanted, he had many businesses. He's not a dumb person. Very well up together person. He knows what he's doing. This person, this person is no idiot. And it was still the same thing. Well, you know, you just got to do what you got to do, aren't you? It was an absolute disassociation. Yeah. from the um the implications for for not just himself obviously for himself but for everyone because uh, i was saying okay you know you you know you're old and you and you wanted to go on your last cruises in your golden years i said what about all the kids at school that were told they have to have it and now it's come out that it was totally useless and they didn't need it and it's given them heart attacks what about them and he goes well we didn't know did we and i said many people did i said what about that he goes well you got and it was always like well yeah well Mm -hmm. Yeah, shrug it off. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's a very good film. There's a very good film I can recommend if people are into films. Um, it's called The Box. It's got Cameron Diaz. I won't. I won't go into it because it's the sort of film you need to watch without really knowing too much about it. But if you want to get a, a gist or understanding of what we're talking about, then the film The Box is a good one. Okay. It sounds good already. If Master Lee recommends a film, you know it's worth watching. Mm. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Um, oh, I, damn. I forgot to show this to Ola earlier on. Did everyone see that? The moon emits its own light. If it was a reflecting sunlight, there would be a hot spot, a reflective hot spot. Can you see that, Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally forgot to show that to Ola. That's a very good point. It is a very good point. It's a very good point indeed, isn't it? I think she would have been totally on board with that. Um, okay. Here's a good one. No. This is what I believe this is a very good example of hiding in plain sight. Because on the face of it, this might seem like one of those stupid Soviet Union stories to blame what happened in the last two years on. I'm just going to put it on the screen now. Neanderthal gene caused up to a million COVID deaths. Genetic tweak found in one in six Britons means cells in the lungs are slower to launch defences. Now, again, got to be careful what I say here. In a nutshell, what they're basically saying is that people with recumbent Neanderthal DNA are more susceptible to being victims of the Soviet Union because of something to do with their lungs. Did anyone notice only in the last five or six years there was all this talk about a change in the thought about neanderthals because mm. traditionally it was like we hunted them they were stupid they were primitive they couldn't compete with us but there was a narrative change not too many years ago if you're into the you know anthropology and this kind of stuff that i noticed that were saying no 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 
we didn't beat Neanderthals. We became them. They became us. We basically interbred with them and merged with them. So the idea is that many people, apparently one in six, have a high preponderance of Neanderthal DNA. And they were more susceptible to COVID. Now just, everyone's going to shoot me down that doesn't believe in viruses here or COVID as a, a virus. But if this was a bioweapon which was designed, stay with me here, whether it was an airborne or it was a Britney Spears, if it's true that one in six people in our, you know, our genotype have recumbent Neanderthal DNA, maybe you needed to get rid of that before the fourth industrial revolution. Mm. Maybe there's something about Neanderthals that simply can't accept Schwab tech. Not compatible. Not compatible. Now, we're talking about eugenesis here, remember, aren't we? Yeah. Farmers. Yeah. W what do you think about this, Master Lee? Do you think this could be an example of something with substance um, put in the mainstream media? Uh, yeah, potentially. I mean, from an esoteric and mystery school perspective, you could pretty much say <clears throat> excuse me, that history is just um, the recording of the genetic modifications throughout humanity. Including right. the moon. Including the moon. Hmm. Now, the other thing you have to factor in, um, and I don't want to go kind of too deep. The other thing you have to factor in that this realm, this reality, this material realm, was probably not as material as it that it, it that it is now. It was far more kind of transient, etherical, and things could actually be formed from other 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 parts of matter okay so like um one of the stories and i'm not saying this is true uh and it's kind of laughable but it only makes sense when it's in context with that reality wasn't physical it was almost dreamlike many many years ago that the moon was actually it came away from the earth like a um let's say for instance if you've got a cluster of essence and then it formed and then grew as an example what, what they say that's how the moon formed that's one of the stories yeah wow now whether it's a myth but, but it sounds ridiculous but when you take it into context that physical reality wasn't as physical as it is now it was very like people could walk through um maybe not walls, but rocks or physical matter. You could put your hand through it. We were talking about this the other day, how that could explain why only a couple of hundred years ago, there was all this talk of the fey people and and fairies and, 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 and smaller beings that lived yeah. in, in around wooded areas that maybe were slightly less physical than we are. Yeah. And people, you know, you know, people have obviously thought of this for a long time, but more people are speaking about it now um, in quite, um, you know, they're not sort of like yeti hunters. They were speaking about it quite seriously, that this was a phenomenon of widely recorded, you know, if you, if you have folklore across like 20 different countries, it's all the same. It's either come from one source or it's a common phenomenon. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, either way, there's, well, there's probably something there. Well, I think um, you have to get the context. So, as an example, as we've moved further into materialism, the um, the reality firms up, and they know this. Those behind the terraforming of this, of this um, realm, which will eventually become some kind of um, crystallized um, structure where there won't be any movement. There'll be no freedom. So you could say that we're moving away from, from freedom into control. So how would you define control? What would it look like if you had to have a material, like a material? It'd be something either like um, crystal, crystalline or um, granite, a mineral. It would become firmer and firmer with less and less um, variables, less and less flexibility. Well, if you take it to the other end of the spectrum, where it was possibly almost dreamlike, the same way that when you go to sleep at night, you can have a dream, you're kind of floating in the sky or walking through 
a wall or you suddenly appear from from nowhere the reality may have been more dreamlike and this is why as an example there was far more importance placed upon dreams in the past now there's absolutely no relevance placed upon dreams or the dream world most people's so, dreams are erased with psychoactive like, mm. antidepressants and shit like that yeah yeah so you I, I guess you've got to kind of look at it as a type of evolution and i think the whole um darwin evolution model it served two purposes one was to convince people of of a certain thing and it was also um, designed to for those who could see that maybe it's bullshit that they would totally eradicate any form of evolution so it's a double whammy because they like to play god yeah well evolution may be a thing but it may be more in terms of not that we came from one creature to another but that we just became more firm more crystallized more cemented so it's harder it potentially it's harder to escape from this particular matrix now hmm okay i can definitely sympathize with the idea that everything is becoming more solid yeah ideas aggregate form egregores thoughts condense into crystalline metaphors nice greta foretold by al gore's repertoire are you a rapper apparently so <laughs> it's easy to be a rapper though, or a right? dark occult poet, poet um yeah we're moving well you know what is what would the fourth industrial greta verse revolution really look like it's less movement it's less physical movement it's the body slowing down crystallizing mm -hmm. and it's but, it's but what they're what they're also doing is they're going to create a false consciousness or a false um imagination Metaverse Meta, inside a metaverse. Yeah. yeah. Inside a metaverse, inside a metaverse. <laughs> you, you will live in the physical universe and you will be happy. Damn. <laughs> you will live in the Gretaverse and you will be happy. Okay. <laughs> you will live but, in um, the... <laughs> but talking about like escaping the Matrix, because uh, you were talking about it earlier with the guest, um, I would strongly suggest, and this is how it was taught to me um, many years ago, that the whole kind of uh, the planets and stuff, we actually contain all of that within us. So when you talk about um, Mars, Mercury, um, different phases of creation, so like um, Mars being the first half phase where spirit entered matter, um, so that, that would be the descent. And then when Mercury appeared, that'd be the second half, um, which is an alchemical phase where we get the opportunity to, I guess you could say, um, unglue or unplug and then ascend. But we're not looking at the planets, we're actually looking at ourselves. So as, as a very quick example, if you consider uh, your, your consciousness or your attention, instead of projecting it up into heaven, we have to project it down into the body. And that's the escape. That's the way out. Wait a minute. The way the way out is down. Yeah, I mean, this was discussed earlier, wasn't it? That, yeah. That yeah. It's not about going up. It's about going down into hell, or into death, into the tomb. Well, isn't this about what the 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 Egyptian or the Tibetan Book of the Dead is all about? It's about how to successfully die and navigate your way through death through the afterlife and i guess to hopefully avoid coming back into the peasant trap yeah no. well if you look at a tourist field they it goes up and then it comes down if you want to go up you have to go down <laughs> so what you're saying is potentially what could be happening is we could be traversing the tourist field backwards well, what they're encouraging, so for instance, m most religions will install this kind of um, idea, belief, that we have to ascend to heaven. It doesn't factor in about uh, the body, or death, or the earth, or so matter. Should we be called rise below? <laughs> rise above. I... As above, so below. Do you know what? Someone who doesn't like us on Facebook, or who doesn't like me rather... That was his thing. He takes a piss by putting hashtag sink below. 
because obviously I hashtag everything rise above. He's mm. like, I sink, you're the sink below crew, you lot. He doesn't watch, so he won't see this. But I thought that was quite funny. Well, no, I think like if uh, rising above is the end game, but to rise above, you have to, I guess, get your hands dirty. You have to um, participate in reality. You have to traverse the tourist field, and the tourist field is full of polarity, of positive and negative pools. And if you want to properly harness all of the energy to traverse the tourist field, you need to harness both of those forces. And this is what we talk about since episode 33, where Master Lee told us how to... Um, oh, was that a 33? Oh, my God. Three hours, three minutes, and 33 seconds. There we go. <laughs> this is getting stupid. Where Master Lee taught us about what igniting the third force really means and to balance these two primary forces of the denying and the affirming force. And I guess, like, when I was talking to Mark earlier and talking about why we don't preach to be all love and light, what we mean by that is that if someone was concentrating purely on being love and light, that is actually a false, you know, you're actually skewing the polarity. Um, you need to harness both of these energies. I always said, if you want to be a light worker, then you move in the shadows. The light worker needs to do work in the darkness. The balance. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you, you can consider your attention, your consciousness as the light. So the light has to go into darkness. So the same way a seed would go into uh, the dark soil in order to grow up to the light. Yes. There's a process. You can't just go straight to the light. So if you're going to light, that kind of means you're dark. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe that, 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 that highlights that whole uh, false light story narrative. Luciferianism, isn't it? Well, it's the all about it's all the about the light. I don't know. Well, well, this is the thing, right? Um, I don't know if I totally agree with it. I'm sort of on the fence with a, with a few of these subjects, but that false light narrative that when you die, you'll be presented with a light. If you go to that light, you basically recycle and you come back. Now, <laughs> at death. You're, you're confronted by uh, the void and the light. You've got a like 50-50 gamble. One way is to escape, and the other way is that you get returned, recycled. I'm always told, go down the light, follow the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Yeah. I've, yeah heard this, the... I've heard this in, 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 in paranormal uh, circles before. But that's that potentially could be the trick, because if you're the light... You want to go into the dark, to the void. Yes. No, I, I don't know if I want how much I want, I want to save of this for our next midweek deep, which I won't sure when it'll be yet. But you and I, Lee, we've spoke this week privately together about um, practicing dying. Yeah. And it's something that we've both done through completely different means. I'm going to assume. Um, and one thing that I'd said to you is something that I had to come to terms with is being comfortable in a completely black void yeah a kind of uh, a kind of a kind of darkness that was so dark it was actually blinding yeah. uh, a, a, a shimmering a, a glistening darkness that like you've never seen before um and obviously i'm here i'm talking about like my consciousness experiments using the spirit molecule and you know and i always said to people when <laughs> when you've been when you've seen that you know the the, the colorful explosions and the entities and the picture puzzle doorway and, and the technicolored rabbit hole and you're flying down that when you get to the end of all that and you've really got to the end there is just a shimmering and you've seen the the, the massive creator monster thing there is there is a shimmering a shimmering blackness and um and it's it's that is the that is the part which uh, is very scary to some people and is actually what has been described as being one of the most terrifying things is to to be confronted with absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, and that's the ultimate control mechanism, isn't it? Because people are afraid of death, and that veil, that mystery, is never really explained to us truly, and they leave it like that on purpose, so that to maintain and even um, harness that the fear. fear. Of death. Yeah. Because with that fear of death, they can pull off exactly what <clears throat> they pulled off in the last two years. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm not, I've, made I'm... It, I've, made it, I've made it clear um, a long time ago that I have no fear of death. Of course, you know, it's going to be um, a concern to me if I'm confronted with death, but it's not my ultimate fear because through my own practice, I practice, um, I guess you could say, um, um, acclimatizing myself with that, even the yeah. sensation of nothing. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I will use my attention, my consciousness as, as the affirming force or the light, and I will direct my attention into the body, which is the dark, which is, uh, you could say, death, the matter. And with the balancing of that, you um, become free. Hmm. But when you're always projecting into the light all the time, and this is why I often joke about love and light, the Love and Light Brigade ultimately could be, and I think potentially is, the ultimate trick to the recycling. We could be talking about the the uh, the fail-safe mechanisms of, of the loose trap here. Yeah. The reset, the reset mechanism that that, that that tricks us into keep coming back against our will. You know, we our best nature is to try and avoid death. <laughs> That's what's been drummed into the meat suit since it was conceived into the realm. You know, we, well, we, well, life well, is well, short. I said, to I said to you that before, that in esoteric teaching, the um, humans didn't have the same sense of self. And actually the ego was some kind of artificially inseminated uh, program um, to give a greater sense of self. Because humans actually reached a point where they didn't care if they were alive or not. And then it became non non-productive for the factory of life yeah for the process so that is basically we're going through phases where they have to balance out either being too um selfish or too selfless so it's you could say it's a fine tuning it changes the quality of the loose i guess yeah the yeah same also, the yeah come on. i was just saying the same as the farmer you know when you're farming like um like a bespoke beef and you're telling the, your, your customers what it's being fed on to get a particular taste of the meat it's been fed on you know organic grass it's been corn fed or whatever you know it's, it's, it's to change the product that's coming out at the other end maybe the louche is particularly delicious when we're living on this cycle that we don't realise that we're infinite beings this is just a temporary meat suit this is it when you die you die you never see your family and your friends again they're separate to you. You'll miss them. Maybe that makes the loose taste better. Yeah, and, and going back to this kind of uh, the void or the light. I mean, if you get it wrong, you just get to come back again. So it's not it's not uh, the end of everything. But I will just add. It is said that there are the there will be a percentage that will. Um, uh, how do I say? will be trapped forever Ooh. somewhere there is no evolution for them so there is that potential and that has been factored in in this uh, food chain or ray of creation they would be the equivalent of sort of like yeah a con like i don't know a constant stock on a, on a genetic farm this is deep yeah this is deep well i would actually say right that some of these characters behind um a lot of what's going on right now maybe it's them maybe they know they're stuck so therefore they don't care there's nowhere for them to go so why would they ha why would they so from, for most people they have a, a conscience yeah. and they have this kind of inner um, knowing that you should do right by people because in the end it will come back to you yeah, yeah. like karma now there's some people that just don't have that now, so like life they, is in the prison. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, um, if there's no reward for them, because they've they've literally gone past the threshold of, of karmic return, that they're stuck, they're trapped, it, for eternity. There, you can't you can't give them anything that will um, make them behave themselves. There's no reward for them, so they just do what they want. Yeah. Life is in a prison is the main analogy. People that go into the prison that have got five years, they have an incentive to be well yeah. behaved, not to get covered in scars, 
not to get involved in much worse things in prison than they're doing outside because they want to get out. <laughs> the lifers, they operate on a completely different dynamic. They know they're yeah. never going to leave prison. They have practically nothing to lose. Um, and that's why they go around doing what they have, whatever they want to the other prisoners. And, you know, we all know about that kind of stuff. Um, so what we could be dealing with, I can't remember who put it like this, but they're saying if this is a simulation, imagine if some if some some people got unplugged in the real world, looked like a matrix thing. If your meat suit got unplugged in the real world or turned off and your consciousness just got trapped here in the simulation and you knew that was the case, how would you act with everyone that was passing through? Mm. You know, you, you would have a, you would have a, a level of remorse. You would have complete bitterness, total hopelessness that could turn you. You'd act like the lifers in jail. Yeah, act like the lifers in jail, mixed with psychopathy. But also, not only that, think the lifers in jail, they have a bit of extra knowledge about the way that a prison works. They've put, maybe some of them have got deals with the prison guards. Maybe some of them got the prison guards in their pockets, right? But it doesn't compare to the knowledge that these entities have about the realm compared to us it's no comparison between a freshman in a prison that's just got his butthole widened and a lifer they're much closer in their knowledge of the prison than we are to the lifers here i hope i'm what, getting that what, right across yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah what, what do the lifers do they get to control everything don't they they even control the guards yeah the guards work for the lifers yeah yeah, here's the thing, because the, listen, the guards, the guards might only work for, in the prison for five years or ten years, or maybe their whole life. The lifers' lives are infinite in this prison. Yeah. Infinite lifers, yeah, we'll finish at one. Mm. Did Why, you want to play a video? Um, no, good vag was just for a break. I think we might have coined a new term, infinite lifers. <laughs> this is a good one, because it really does describe... Um, and it explains why, or it explains the um, the trivium of these characters that do the things that they do. Yeah. Like, we sit here, we can't believe how somebody would do that. Well, this explains how somebody could do it. They have absolute remorse for the realm and all of the transient temporal meat suit in, in, um, ignorant occupants that pass through their infinite prison king david david or david ike as most people know him he talks about this a lot in the children of the matrix book that what what you could be up against with these he was talking about reptilians back then slash archons what you could be talking about is recumbent um algorithmic entities they're actually just sort of like stuck here running out some awful script you know Apparently, there's a worse place. There's a type of cosmic isolation chamber where, so it would be the equivalent of where you put all the lifers together. So there's no interaction with the uh, those that are transiting through this realm. Um, I, I guess this would be the equivalent of uh, uh, Steiner's uh, eighth sphere. Uh, they have to be isolated because um, they, they start to contaminate the food chain. The ray of creation. A bit like where they put all the serial nonces on a certain wing in a prison. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, yeah, this is... We're really, getting, <laughs> we're really getting down to the nub here. Yeah, if this is a soul prison, okay. See, that's the thing. None of us have ever been on the nonce wing. We haven't even conceived what those monsters are like there. Whoa. Yeah, because that, that, that's talked about in the Law of One, in the Ra channelings, that there is like... um. There is another, like I think he talks about another Earth that's just low, that's only lower fourth di dimensional entities there, um, and and some higher ones that have basically been quarantined. Well, due to the... They used to do that to the realm. I mean, there's certain countries or islands where they used to put people that were kind of they didn't want to contaminate the rest of society. We've got people viewing from one of those islands right now. We have shitloads of people viewing from a beautiful country now that used to be a prison colony of Mother of Bro yeah. Mother England. Like well, they used to send the worst quote unquote criminals. Yeah. Probably all the people that didn't agree with the parasite, just send them to a new island. 
Well, I think yeah. it's it's a good kind of working analogy, isn't it? Like, um, it's a way to have some kind of direct realism. I, I always try and do that. So if I want to know the, the kind of mysteries of what's out there in term, terms of a cosmic level, just scale it down. And this is why the prison is such a good analogy. And also how to escape the prison. Yeah, as above, so below. Um, and, you know, what was, what was one of the things that you talked about when you first joined this? It's like, you know, if you're trying to escape a prison, you don't go around telling everyone about it. And you don't do it with everyone else. You usually form a, sm a small group of talented people who are going to be instrumental in you breaking out of the prison. There's no one coming along with you that's not that's not helping. And they've got to be um, reliable and trustworthy. Yeah. Hey, and not every, we have to also remember there's a very good um, chance that many people deserve to be in the prison and, and not everyone deserves to escape. So there's a reason for the, there might there might be a reason this is this is a prison. Yeah, but I just must add to this analogy of the prison um, because people sort of will think, well, that means there's only a select few that can escape. Well, it, that could be the case. It could be a five percent of the world's population at, at a time or at any given moment, at any uh, one life cycle. It could just be five percent. But the other thing you have to factor in: what if those that escape that are on the outside can either feed f back information and data to help others get out in twos, threes, four, five, six, whatever. Yeah. And then even better, they intentionally go back into the prison. That's what I think has already happened. So I think we're all sat here to be honest. I've, I, <sighs> You remember I've talked about, and I'm opening them up here, I haven't talked about this this part of it before. I talked about my oldest memory, which was the recurring memory of having to warn people about some big forthcoming event that's all through my childhood. The recurring dream that I've had for the last sort of five to ten years is about being in a prison. But this, and, I, and I've put it down to me spending a lot of time in Southeast Asia because everyone's told about the prisons there. I've seen a couple of them, they're horrific. I haven't been in them, but I've seen them. And I always have this... Pr the dream of sort of being in this Southeast Asian prison, but the prison has very loose walls. Like it's well easy to escape. And this is now my recurring dream. I can easily get out of this prison any time I want. I can outwit the guards. I can escape. I can go back out and I can even sneak back in without anyone finding that I've gone. And I try to tell everyone else how to get out of the prison. And I show them, look, it's fucking well easy. But they're all convinced that as soon as you get out, and get caught you get like another 50 years and I keep sneaking back in to try and tell people and this has been my new recurring dream that's been going on for ages and before I started Rise Above and all this stuff I was worried that like maybe I was going to have too much and this dream was a forewarning that I was going to have too much fun in Southeast Asia one time and end up in prison and I was really worried about this don't get me wrong I like to have a lot of fun especially when I go to Southeast Asia and it's very easy to get to prison there you don't have to do very much and I was always thinking, is this a forewarning? I've got to be careful. Um, but no, I don't think it is. I think it's a very powerful metaphor. Yeah. That the prison is very easy to escape. Um, but many people are too scared uh, about the implications of being caught. Yeah, and there's also the other thing of some people actually like to be in prison. Some people will some deliberately people go to prison. Or, yeah, or some people actually crave it. Yeah. And then you've got different types of prisons. You've got open prisons. I remember um, an old friend of mine, he went to an open prison um, for beating somebody up. And um, I remember the prison officer said to him, look, if you're going to escape, because there's no walls here, you can just walk out. If you're going to escape, do it around about four o'clock because we finish our shift. Now, if you escape earlier, it means we've got to spend all day looking for you and then we'll be we'll get home late. So if you're going to escape, do it right about four o'clock. That'll give you the maximum amount of time to get away. And <laughs> the, the guard said that to him on his first day. <laughs> Why? Good to know. Good guard. <laughs> Could have been a setup, but... LFX is saying, give us the answer then, double L. I mean, what do you want? What was the answer to getting out of the prison? I guess my answer would be that the prison itself is a construct. The prison itself is an egregore. 
It's like this. My friend in Sweden, who I went to stay with in 2020, when I started to make my expose videos about what's going on, and he taught me all about the the Wim Hof breathing. And he'd actually spent time personally with Wim Hof in the snow. You know, he's from that part of the world. And he had spent some time in prison on a on a on a bogus charge a couple of weeks. He's a very well together businessman, very su super successful. And he said, um, do you know what? When I was in that prison cell, I actually felt freedom from all the stresses of his multi million pound business. He said, When I was in that prison cell, I was still I was freer than anyone. He said I can go anywhere. And he was just using Wim Hof breathing. So he said, I, I wasn't locked away. They couldn't contain me in that prison cell. Mm. He said, they were just containing my meat too. He said, it was pathetic. I, he, said, he said, I've never been so far when I had all that time to travel. And he's talking about astral projecting that he was doing through Wim Hof breathing. And I've seen him do it. He was a monster. He, he, he could make himself completely get to the point of passing out, but hold it there and not pass out and leave his body. Like, like, That's mad. Yeah, yeah, real powerful. So I thought about this. Yeah, the, the prison... The, the, you know, if if it's true that this is a metaphysical farm or a loose harvesting trap, remember we're living in a in a spectral fr frequency realm. That's only happening on one frequency. That's happening from non-physical entities outside of our meat suit realm. What, you think you can't beat that kind of shit with a mental fortress? I guarantee you can. I guarantee you Just can. say no. Literally, this is all consensual. Every level of, you know, you, this is why, you know, we try to get away from talking about this stuff every single week because, like I say, I don't want to ex ex explain the prison and expand on how it is constructed the fact is that it's an egregore and it's constructed through our collective thought. <laughs> and, you know, I guess it's like going to AA. The first thing to admit is that you're living in a fucking loose farm. Or well, this is um, constructed to drain our energy, whether it be negative or positive. I hope that makes sense in some way. Yeah, it's not, too, yeah, it's no. not too abstract. No. And just to add to that, people often ask the question, why is... Why is this sort of knowledge of how to escape? Why is it a secret? Why so on and so forth? Why is there um, good esoteric knowledge that's been occulted? Why is it hidden? Well, honestly, it's not. If you want it, you'll find it. Mm. it. You may find it in different ways, but if you really want it, you'll find it. And I guess that is the uh, the main part of it. You have to have the, the will. You have to have the uh, motivation to find it. And until you can develop that amount of will and motivation to find it, I guess you have to keep recycling and suffering. Well, listen, I mean, I, it's taken me over 20 years now of daily investigation and, and, and sort of dedication to try and work out some of these things. And we're still here trying to work it out. Yeah, but, but, the but, but so, sorry, come, sorry. No, but I'm just saying the point is that this is the journey. The intent is wanting to get to the bottom of these questions, um, and and it's through and it's through this learning that we that we seek this ascension that we're talking about. Whether you want to put a name on it or a certain religion is really quite irrelevant. As long as you come to this deep understanding of the self, the power of the self, what we really are, what our relationship with the realm is, and what we're doing here then there is no other goal. So I was trying to... That was me getting seen. No, you. mate. No, that's good. Sorry, Master Lee. Go on. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to... Um, it's quite tricky because once you kind of um, open the door a little bit, you kind of have to open <laughs> Yeah, once you're this far in, it's... Yeah, uh, we've only got like five minutes left. <laughs> All right, well, well, I'll tell you what, we, we've, we've really primed the next midweek deep there, which we'll do in the next few weeks. But let's just, let's just sort of maybe bring it back, back down to earth um, for the last five minutes because we've, we've really gone round it tonight. <laughs> Our first guest, she was dropping bombs. You know, then we had, a, we had some negative feedback and a complaint from Mark. I think we, in, in the end we got some common ground. We tried to answer a lot of questions. You know, we, le we left on much better terms than we started, which I think is a bonus. 
I'll tell you, Mark, Mark's, a, Mark's a warrior because he actually called in. Yeah, that's yeah, what no, I said. No, Max is the only respect, one that's had mate. the balls to do it. And that's why, you know, like I said, even though if we weren't agreeing on stuff and I felt like we maybe getting a bit accusatory or whatever, I gave him the time and I wanted to properly explain everything that he was concerned about because it's important. There's nothing here that's happening by an accident. This is everything you're seeing and hearing is a, is a very conscious decision. And I believe um, in what we're doing here. So I'm always happy to explain it if people actually... How give that impetus and call us up. It's always better to talk. Yeah. Um, okay, what's going on soon? Rise above. Next week on eleven eleven. Let's go. No, <laughs> on eleven eleven, we're having the next pirate radio. Uh, we will probably, if Master Lee is around, we will have a deep chat um, at the end in the power hour. But the good news is. Spitter and Manic are going to be joining awesome. us in the studio. You're going to be on the decks? Yeah, mate. Sweet. The week after that, let me get this straight. 18. Sheep Farm. Nice. Sheep Farm are coming on with a presentation about guess who? Al Gore. Interesting. They've gone in on Al Gore himself. So we've got an Al Gore presentation and a collaboration with Sheep Farm. I can't wait to see that thumbnail. On the 18th. The week after that, we're going to have a break. Because like I said, we will have a few more breaks um, in the run up to Christmas. Um, so that's what's going on in the next couple of weeks of Rise Above. And there'll be a midweek. When are you next free on a Wednesday night, Master Lee? Any idea? Uh, I would say in two weeks. Okay. We'll, we'll aim to do um, a midweek deep in about two weeks' time. Are we going to talk about demonology? Uh, yeah, I'm still sorting out these Satanists. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we, we, we I'm, can have I'm some... having these conversations and um, yeah, just collating their side of the story. Uh, and it, it'd be very interesting. It's very you'd be very surprised. In fact, I'll just give you a little clue. There are there are actually some Satanists that are against the New World Order. That yeah. are against the Satanists. Because maybe it doesn't serve them. It could be. Well, if they're all about self service, service to self, and the New World Order is not serving them, of course they're going to be against it. Yeah, so, that's so, very so, interesting. Yeah, so. It's not all um, doom and gloom, because even those that are against us, they have enemies as well. The the From enemy within. of the uh, thy enemy is thy friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent way to end up. And we we, we will help. I'll tell you what. We'll finish the show on this positive comment, um, because I think we've ended on a positive note um, this evening. This is from King Kai on Telegram. And he said, this is exactly what Master Lee was talking about when the denying force in real time. This has been a great read, just observing what's taking place. All the accusations. I really hope this Mark guy calls the show. And he did, which is great. Because we can't always have people that agree with the Rise Above family and views. It's about time we had some conflict. He says, I hope we, I really hope Nova Gimp would go on the show many months ago. But if Mark is a real one and he has any balls, he will air his grievances on the show. And he did. There you go. So big shout to Mark and his balls. Um, I can't wait to tune in later on a Friday night. Um, it makes my Fridays. And lastly, people, always remember remember to rise above. Yeah. Okay. And that's how we're going to end the show this week. No music. Master Lee, thank you very much for joining us in the Guardians. Thank you. Rise above. Rise, rise above. above indeed. All right, guys. We will see you next week for Pirate Radio. Pirate. Pirate Radio with Manic, Spitter, Magics, Oma Beats, Andy PG and myself. Rise above. Rise above.